on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, joined me is Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. It was an excellent link, that, Rick. Did you say nime at one point? 104.9? <laughs> Did <laughs> I? I? Other than that, it was Again, textbook. I, I, yeah, a desperate attempt to be inarticulate. Sure. But let myself down. With your See, this is the good thing stuff. about the boxing thing, because, uh, uh, there's no chance of me, you know, uh, slurring the words. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I already slurred my words. Yeah, yeah, so no yeah, one, yeah. <laughs> any damage will yeah. be totally fine. Yeah. Oh, The dear. doctor's rushing in. I think there yeah. might be some kind of concussion. <laughs> yeah. Jane just going, no, that's just the way he talks normal. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh. um, but, uh, cause I'm thinking maybe, did you start the show with, with that particular kind of, uh, manner? Just cause obviously a lot of new listeners, I imagine, thanks to the massive poster campaign. And you obviously weren't impressed that's, there. That's, that's exa- there's, there, there's a few examples today of irony coming back and biting you. Yeah. yeah. That, that seemed like a funny idea at the time, me posing that up. But, um, Jonathan Ross phoned me up when they first went up and he just said, I've just seen a big poster of a predatory gay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You do look a little bit, uh, yeah. Hello. Oh, <laughs> what's your name? Yeah. Yeah. Why would you like to <laughs> sit down here? <laughs> <laughs> and then you're in the background. And also, uh, it, the, the, I think the funny thing about having you as a partner, I mean, the only good thing is that, y- y- you know, you look, you look weird and tall, like too freakishly tall and lanky. Oh, yeah, yeah, but in yeah. that one, no, because your background and you're smiling, you don't look as weird as you do in real life or as, as freakishly tall. So it sort of ruins it a little bit for me. Look at, look is at Pilkington. Comp- look, 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 look. Pilkington, what are you He's doing? not listening. He's just opening a, a packet, what are they? McVitie's. But see, uh, see, we should mention them. We get some free ones if anyone at McVitt is are listening, because we're not getting the perks of this. Nothing. Sort of. I, I tell you, I'm not getting anything. I really got in this game for uh, the ladies, for the money, for the voiceover work. Certainly, yeah. I'm seeing hiding the hair of that. But um, you're not getting the voiceover work because right, Jethro. The Jethro's getting all the parts right, that you might yeah, get. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, Rick. Yeah, you were the voice of what? The drink driving campaign. <laughs> You sound like you sound like a man who was run over in a drink drive <laughs> incident. Oh, I mean, dear. it's like you don't drive. Yeah, I didn't get any money for that. You did drink I? Oh, did I? I can't remember. Yeah. It's like, I mean, talk I don't about drive, yeah. The, well, that's good, I don't drive. Pot blast no, it said don't drink and drive, so I've chosen but just to drink. at least I can formulate sentences using the English language, and I'm not getting the voiceover work. What's it, what's, yeah, your, what's the English, the English language of the 14th century. Well, it's oh. better, better <laughs> a English language <laughs> and English language. <laughs> Rather than whatever kind of Middle England language you speak, the language of the hobbits. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Carl. Alright. See, you're eating a biscuit. a biscuit. I can't believe it. Are you bored with this already? Do you know what? MTV called me last week. They called me again yesterday and said, when can they come down to do a- Oh, they're coming down next Saturday, by the way, to do a little screen test for you. They're gonna sort of just film you with a little camcorder. You said this. They're gonna film you. Are you alright? Do you wanna- I mean, are you hungry? Do you wanna go out and have a meal? I can't believe you're eating while I'm on air. No one can hear that. Do you know who I am? No one can hear Explain that. Explain who I am. Well, that's Ricky Gervais, right? He's made his name on TV. Yeah. Okay, he's done <laughs> an, any number of corporate gigs, <laughs> which- and they pay silly money. So, yeah. I mean, this guy's earning, you know, and really, uh, earning beyond his talent. <laughs> yeah. Alright? So, so, I, I think, think I deserve you know, a little bit more than a little mank eating a biscuit while Rick, I'm talking. Rick, Rick Gervais? Yeah. Have you won a BAFTA? Yeah, too! Alright, so, yeah, yeah. just a little bit of respect? Yeah. 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 Carl, well, what uh, have you won? What have you won? I-I got a, uh, I got a, got a bronze certificate for doing a full week at school. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It was it? only a bronze. <laughs> <laughs> what is that then? Three out of five days? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I got me a little Crusaders badge, if you, if you remember. What's the little the Crusaders badge? The Crusaders badge for the religious club. So... Oh, is that the fellow that you went and played you had to go ping pong ball, so they wanted to talk to you about God? Yeah. Yeah. You got a Crusaders badge, did you? Yeah, that's why I went. That's why I joined. That's why I joined. For the I like, I like the little badge. Did yeah. four weeks and then packed it in. Uh-huh. But uh, we're talking about MTV, right? And I was feeling a bit nervous, wasn't I? About, <coughs> about like you know the way I look, right? And what have you? And then I watched a bit of Celebrity Big Brother and all the fuss that Mark Owen's getting. And he's not. He's not that good looking, is he? He's, he's very- I, I like- I want to be Mark Owen's mate. If anyone who knows Mark Owen or Mark Owen's listening, I want to be his mate. Yeah, I yeah. think he's brilliant. I think he's a nice lad, but what I'm saying is, right, all the girls go mad over him. Yeah. And he's not- he's not that good looking, is he? Well, no, he's got a- st- he is in a certain way, isn't he? That sort of, uh, non-threatening sort yeah, of- Yeah, but he's not- he's not stunning, is he? Do you well, know what I mean? No, but- no- well, what's well, your definition of a stunning? Yeah. Who well, do you like? Someone who you look at and you go, God, they're, they're good Which looking. Bloke who, 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 Which no, bloke do you fancy? Who, no, who, no, what bloke do you think's attractive so, then? So, if I was into men? Yeah, yeah. In fact, you can, you can still say a bloke's a good looker without, yeah, like, yeah, fancying yeah, him. Who do you think is attractive? Uh, 
probably, uh, oh, I mean, it, it depends what you're looking for. No, well, no, just looks, just looks, just looks, just looks, just different looks as well. Of course, yeah, yeah. 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 would you say it was, like, stunning in your definition? A good-looking lad. Yeah. Good-looking lad. Oh, look at him over there, he's, uh, ooh. Do you find, you know, Robbie Williams, do you find him attractive? No, uh, boy next door, look. No, no, who do you, Carl, hurry up, cos it's, you know, we've only got two hours. Probably, uh, do you know, I, I, I can't think of one offhand. Mark Owen is, is pretty good looking then, really. Uh, what, there's not, just name one bloke that you think's an attractive guy. There must be one bloke that you've either met or that you've, you know, seen in a pub Who or you think on a poster. Attractive? Tell you what. Go on. Tell you what. Um, works here. Um, young Alex Zane. Oh, hello! Oh, hello! Oh, Alex! 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 Oh,
Well, all right, then say maybe that's one day a week, but on other days <laughs> they'll have like- <laughs> Shark okay. Monday. I <laughs> think, yeah, Monday, yeah, the sandwiches. Today at sandwiches is Shark Monday. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just that- So your <laughs> point is that there's all these fish not being eaten. Yeah. So and they're, they're being killed. They're taking them out of the sea, no one's eating them. And you're worried, what, that the sea's gonna rise because the more things you take out- Well, we're just gonna run out. Because the, the, the fish drink it, don't they, and it keeps the yeah. water level down. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. well, you know, you know what I mean, uh, there's stuff, there's was stuff you that worries said, me. You're worried that, was it you who said that you were worried that, cause, you know, there's sponge in the sea. Yeah. But if they took it all away- No. Like, was it, is that's, that him? That's a Stephen Wright joke. Is that Stephen Wright? What yeah. was the joke? Uh, sponges grow in the sea. That kills me. How deep would it be if they didn't? <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he confused you yeah. with Stephen Wright. Ooh. Who, who for a living purposely says ridiculous things. <laughs> yeah. Does that worry you, Carl? Uh. <laughs> well, think about that. <laughs> Play a record. What oh, do you want? What do you want? I'd love to. A classic, a beautiful song by Simon and Garfunkel, April Come She Will. April Come She Will, Simon and Garfunkel. That was in the days when they kept songs short. Short and to sweet. What do you think of that, Carl? As a yeah, track? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, you like that, yeah, do you? Yeah, it was a good one, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, that, that's, um, that's Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington Introduced. for you. Coming up on the show, we've got Educating Ricky. I'm not happy with this. Oh, really? Because the, the last few weeks have been genius. <laughs> what, it's, it, what, it's a drop in quality, is there, of the education of me? <laughs> well, it's, it's just, like I said, I've wasted a lot of time this week searching on the web, right? Um, you wasted a lot of time searching on the web because you come up with things that aren't true. Why aren't you looking books and verified sort of like journals? The web is the new book though, isn't it? No. The it is, web is the new book. <laughs> That's <laughs> what you've got wrong. Yeah. Well, so I've been searching, is hardly anything. I spoke to you in the week. Um, yeah. About Monday or Tuesday. What did you say? Two There's days. nothing happened this week in the world. There's nothing from... going on. There was a new car wash that you can put dogs in. <laughs> <laughs> there was a car wash you can put it's dogs in. That's the only thing that's happened in the world. <laughs> and that and the jellyfish. <laughs> and we've covered that. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, yeah, we're, we've, I've managed to find some bits, but it's not that good. Um, okay. Rock Busters. Yeah. Oh, we've, you've really, really G'd up. So that's coming up, the thing that's not that good. Yeah, yeah. Look yeah. forward to that. Yeah. Could you just quickly tell us about the car wash with the dog in it? Well, that, I don't know what's the That story. didn't make the top I three. I didn't, I didn't waste that much time on it, to be honest. What did it, it just say? Said, it just said, um, you know, how busy are you? Uh, have you got a dog? Um, <coughs> how about saving some time? There's some car wash out. Um, it's, it's not a car wash, it's dog wash. Um, you take it down there, put your coin in, put your dog in, and it comes out clean. See, there's nothing in is it. Is this is this called a bath? Isn't it? No, but it's like a machine. Right. There's a machine, but but we'll li you know that's why I didn't pick it. <laughs> 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 hey, so we've got we've got uh, some of them bits coming up. Yeah. Uh, Rockbusters. Yeah. Um, Rick, can I just uh, <sighs> can I just explain some of the prizes we got here yeah, for Rockbusters? Because I just <laughs> want you to try and picture, if you would, the kind of XFM listener <laughs> who'd particularly want this <laughs> collection, <laughs> this collection of of, of, of <laughs> gifts. You've got the um, the best chill out album ever. This is yeah. the one, as I said before, that's largely made up of songs you may have heard in adverts. Sure. So sure. you've got the um, the Volvo advert on there. Yeah. And the T-Mobile phone. T-Mobile. Brilliant. That's on there. So um, that's a uh, Roy Good. Cobb. So look forward Good. to that. Um, yeah, uh, again, just just imagine which XFM listener is particularly looking forward to Top of the Morning with Terry Wogan. <laughs> His uh, two disc set there. You've got, uh, uh, it starts with, um, <coughs> we've got the Bangles on there. We've got Billy Joel, River of Dreams, uh, Shine On by Mr. Christa Burr. So, um, so that's yeah, good. just look forward to that. Um, <coughs> oh dear. We got the uh, Only Fools and Horses last year's Christmas special. We, we gave one of those away last year, uh, yeah. last week, but, uh, still more. To shift. Is the, is the, uh, do I spy and a little free? Yes, it's car. a little free three wheel trotter independent trading uh, oh. three wheel car. So that's there as well. So um, as I say, if you if you if you like fairly uh, and mediocre little, comedy, little, little, little Jonathan Ross's face there yeah, on the back. God was, oh. And uh, maybe you also want uh, Jerry Halliwell's Body Yoga DVD, Rick. So sure, that is yeah, well, well that's you. good quality. And then just a few token, uh, XFM kind of things. We've got, uh, the Manic Street Preachers DVD and, uh, the U2 best And, of. uh, tell me, Steve, how do, uh, the lucky winner, uh, listeners win these? 
Rick, I'm glad you've asked. What they do is they email in with the answers to Rockbusters, which is a quiz that Hold on, man. Hold on, man. How do they email if we don't know the email address? Rick, again, thanks for asking. Thanks for flagging that up. Um, ricky.gervais hmm. at xfm.co.uk. That'll be coming up shortly. Um, Try and get into the mindset of Carl Pilkington. A lot of yeah. people have been trying to email in answers, trying to think through kind of logically, sure. or maybe based on the rules that they've picked up over the or years. Or when he says it, it a cryptic clue, they believed him. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, you've just got to think more like <laughs> a mentalist right. to try and get. Windy. First of all, right, the prizes that I source every week. Explain yourself. Um, what I said to you, we're doing between now and Christmas because it's just a few weeks till Christmas. Right. I thought I'd make up sort of family packs. Okay. That mm -hmm. um, the winner can have something, say like, um, there's a nice U2 album in there, right, yeah. so the winner might want to keep that, but they can get rid of the Jerry yoga thing. They can give Only Fools Nurses to Uncle. To the dad. To the right. dad, yeah. The the the, I think the mum would love the Terry Wogan. Yeah. The thing. yoga for the, your sister. Right. Yeah. And all that. So is that, is that, that's, that's what you, you thought through, was it, or, or was it that there was a load of junk in the office? Did, or, or did you, you scoop them up with two arms and it's as much as you could carry down the corridor? Yeah. yeah. A little bit of that. Yeah. But, yeah. but okay. that's, that's me, uh, that's me workings on why you've got all that. Okay. Brilliant. That's Good excellent. Lot of sense, yeah. um, that, that's coming up. Um, what? And me, and me, me mum sent some more. What we also needed there is he's, he's got a little, he's got a letter from his mum. My mum did some more rockbusters for us. I reckon, I, th I reckon they're secretly listening, Carl. They've said they're not listening, but I reckon they are. Does well. that worry you? Well, let's play a record and then let's hear, uh, let's hear your mum's rockbusters. Better Warren G. Oh, oh. Oh. Well done, mate. Well done. Regulators. I hope Nate's involved. Regulators. Nick Dogg. Yeah. I hope so. I hope too. But you can't be in Nirvana. You know you're right on XFM 104.9. I had to, uh, meet the, uh, doctor for the, for this fight thing, uh, in the week. And, uh, uh, it's the one who's off, um, um, Big Brother. So psychiatrist. Yeah. And, um, but she's a medical doctor and she's sort of, um, you know, uh, big in the, in the boxing sort of world as well. And, um, one of the tests, I had to do a punch test, the other test I had to do was to get in the bod pod. You really? Know, the same as, as fat swallow? Yeah, yeah. And, and he it, wiped it down since he was Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I was a little bit nervous and, uh, So I what does this do? What exactly does it do? The what it does, it, it, it uh, you do a, um, uh, a displacement sort of calibration with a, a known volume. All right, just bear in mind that Carl's listening, so if you want okay. to explain that in. What it does, Carl, is it works out your density. Okay, right, again, through, okay. Through, through, through displacement, it knows how much your, what your volume is for the air displaced, right, in this, in this thing, and, um. In layman's terms, what does it tell you? Uh, what it, 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 it tells you, well, it, it know, well, it knows, it knows what m muscle weighs, it knows what fat weighs, it knows your average density of your, your, your skeleton, uh, what height you are there, so it works out from your volume and your density. Um, it can work out, therefore, probably, what percentage of that is muscle, fat, bone, etc. What, um, what if you put in one of those, um... Oh, God. <laughs> no, go on, then. No, go on, what were you gonna ask? What, Just what? Think, what would it do if you put in one of those pug dogs? <laughs> you better want to lose what? What do you mean, what would it do? What, like, on Ricky's lap? <laughs> no. Or or do, you, do you know those dogs that are all wrinkling, have got too much skin for the skeleton? Yeah. And it's all, yeah. like, caving in and folding over? Yeah. Would the machine go, well, we know what you are, so it's all right? Or would it say, oh, what's going okay, on here? Compute, yeah. Do you what? know what I mean? Like last week when you were laughing why do you at me want about- a, Why do you want to confuse machines? Do you remember when he put in Y to a computer yeah, search engine to try yeah. and confuse it? I well, love the fact I, I want the I want the computer to come back. Why not? And your head explode. I mean, I love the idea that you're trying to. What? What? I mean, it, it, it's better than what I thought you were going to say, which is, what if you put a fly in there? <laughs> well, I'm you worried about that. Half man, I said, don't let a fly in. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway. So anyway, what percentage of you is muscle and what percentage of you is fat? Um, I'm, uh, I'm 25% fat. 25% fat? Yeah. Now, what's written? And, what, and most, was, like, and most of me is muscle. Um, could bone density in that. Rick Waller was 60% fat, which I've looked into it and apparently is exactly the same as a pork scratching. Wow. That's extraordinary. So he is, he is yeah. the qu equivalent of a 30 the living, stone yeah, pork, a giant pork scratching. scratching. Yeah. So, um, so is 20% fat, is that good or bad? No, 20% is all right, 25 is over. Right. I, I, um, uh, men, healthy, fit, lean men, um, uh, about eight, 18, 20. Um, right. I'm 25. So you're a healthy, fit, no, lean man? No, 18, I'm 25. Oh, you're 25? Yeah, right, yeah, right, so right. I'm, I'm 5%, yeah. um, over. And a boxer, uh -huh. a boxer that, that is in peak, you know, with the, uh, basically, you, you've seen the ones, they just look, you know, like Bruce Lee, yeah. they're 8%, 8 fat. Wow. So, uh, Is that I mean, good for you? 
Um, well, I don't think it's that bad, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you, you need a bit of fat, Bruce, right? Bruce like, Bruce, Bruce Lee supposedly, uh, I mean, there's sort of many rumours, I'm sure you're fascinated by them, Carl, conspiracy theories surrounding Bruce Lee's death. Yeah. One of which is that he, his body was, it's at the peak of physical perfection, he had an aspirin because of a headache. And it reacted with his, because yeah. uh, just the impurities in the aspirin killed him. Yeah. Yeah, you're I nodding. Uh, yeah, uh, you're cause nodding. It, cause it, cause it's sort of like quite interesting and a bit weird. Yeah. It'll have yes, that. that's a fact. It'll have, yeah. Well, I'll are you aware that. of the fact that supposedly he actually cheated death, he actually faked his own death so he could work undercover for the Hong Kong police? Are you yeah. aware of that? Yeah. 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 Do you believe that as well? Not so, not so convinced. Dunno. Do Don't you believe he could kill a man by putting all his energy into a trembling hand and touching him and every blood vessel burst? Well, it's just, uh, another form of trickery, isn't it? I mean, you <laughs> met up with, uh, yeah. with Darren, didn't you? Old, uh, met up with Darren Brown, yeah. Darren Brown. Yeah, he's yeah. incredible, yeah. He's probably the Britain's best illusionist, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah. You know, can put that on a poster yeah. if you want. I'll tell you yeah. what, though, <laughs> right? What? Changing the subject a bit. Go we were on. talking about a fly getting in that pod. Yeah. Yeah. Um, read in the week when I was searching for stuff to educate, you know, the educate Ricky section. Yeah. Which we will be uh, Do you want to answer that phone? Because it's annoying me. <sighs> who's phoning? I don't I'm know. It's obviously someone who doesn't know that you're talking at the moment, so leave it. Okay, let, 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 it, finish it, it let him finish it. It could point. be, it could be, um, leave it. Uh, it could be the head Just of. Leave it. Yeah, go on. Could be um, the head of XFM. Yeah. Oh, I'm so scared. I'm no, no, it's not. Awards, we need to go. We must no, I won't be embarrassing him. I am going. Don't call me when I'm working. Nice. Right. Well, yeah. Machine. Yeah. High five. Yeah. Yeah. Raging against the machine. So anyway, yeah. Right. We we're talking about flies yeah. getting in a pod. And do you know, like how um, a Barbie doll, if it was real, it wouldn't be able to work. Do you know right. what I mean? A yeah. Barbie doll, if a woman had the proportions, yeah, she wouldn't be. A, tie your shoelaces up and stuff cause, right. cause her, her legs are too long for her back and all that. Flies, scientists can't work out how they fly. It's a bee. It's a bee. It's a bee, not a fly. No, a fly as well. No. A fly is, it, apparently its body is like too big for its wings yeah. and um, they still can't work it out. Yeah. How, how which, which, which in that, your mind says what? <laughs> something spooky? They, 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 they have worked it out. They, they, it, it, the fact that what they do, the, the the wing actually beats at a ridiculous at about 150 times a second, so it displaces air. Yeah. yeah. So, so they have. I know what you it. mean. I know what you mean. It's it's incredible that it can fly because it's got such small wings. Yeah. All right. And okay. it's a bee, not a fly. So, yeah. But other than that, good point. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <Better than Bowie. laughs> ah, <laughs> uh, another classic. Be my wife off the Low album. David Bowie. David Bowie. It's a cracker. Be my wife off a low. Very good indeed. Yeah. Rick, I, you know I, my frustration with the homeless. Yeah. You know they wind me up. <laughs> Walking through Soho last night, <laughs> I saw a homeless fella <laughs> reading a book. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, if he's got the wherewithal to read a book, yeah. right, he's obviously, you know, he, he wants to keep himself occupied, his mind occupied, his mind educated. Yeah. My point is, why not, instead of reading a book, have a quick look through the job vacancies section of the Evening Standard, or maybe just take the time to fill in some kind of application form for, you know, maybe, you know, uh, so a you're, job you're, or something you're like that. What the, is, no, the, no, 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 no. is the ability to read with the ability to house yourself. Well, no, because what I'm saying is, it seems to me, he's obviously got a certain, you know, grasp psychologically of, you know, his where he's not, not mental like, people who haven't got well, houses. Well, a lot of them are, Rick. I've well, seen them dancing and shouting and screaming, uh, you know, and pissing in doorways and stuff. Yeah, and yeah again, crazy. you're confusing homelessness with trampiness. Well, again, you know, Rick, Some people just have listen, left home and they haven't got a- Gervais, I'm not a sociologist. No. Sorry if I can't spot all the clever distinctions that yeah. a trained expert such as yourself can. Well, all I know is, there was a fella reading a book. Well, you know, you know the ones that have got beards right. and sing little tunes and they they're smell of piss. They're my favourite. Right? They are brilliant. Yeah, and they they, they're funny. drinking special brew. Yeah. First thing one. That's an alcoholic okay. tramp, yeah, right? They are, they are you know the ones fun. that sit- with a dog or a cell big issue, mm -hmm. they just they just haven't got their own place. Right. Do you see? Th okay. Well, okay. again, I mean, there's because I, I it's tricky finding a place. I know because I had to move out recently, and it's a nightmare. I had to get like estate agents on it, and I had to go and see a load of places. Sure. And I was doing a job as well, you know. And I still managed to fit it in. This guy's just lounging around on the street. Yeah. So I'm surprised he, should he be can't able to find, find the loads time. of places to live. I'm surprised he can't find the time to visit a couple of different residences. Yeah. Because there's some pretty cheap ones, you know. If you go kind of a bit farther out of London, maybe it's because he wants to live in the Soho area. And frankly, I it's expensive. what I'm confused about is the number of homeless people that recognise me and say they enjoy the office. Mm. They've got to be watching it through Dixon's window. I think that's probably demographic that's sort of hung over from uh, some of your previous TV work. The 11 o'clock show? Yeah, you know, or the, stuff like that. Or, the ones or, that used to slip by. Yeah, exactly. Tramps and the French for me. <laughs> exactly, yeah. 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 Some yeah, of the weirdos. Sure. Or maybe sort of people who watched, you know, have watched the show and then have fallen on hard times since then, I don't know. 
And this is not necessarily linked. I'm no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought so. Carl's lost. Carl's lost in this conversation. Carl, are we boring you then? No, no, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's a bit tight, isn't it? What? Because it's like, I, I sometimes think it could have been me. When I, when I see homeless people and that, yeah. I just think, you know, I nearly killed a man once. It could have totally changed my life. So, whoa, 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 you want to slow down there? Whoa, whoa, just want to back up for a second. Just back what? up for a second. No, like, like, like that time when I was in Wales, right? And I picked up a big piece of slate and chucked it off the cliff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And it nearly hit a fella. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right, in that split second, if he would have decided to sort of go and pick up a shell that was close to the sea, <laughs> it, it, it could have hit him. Yeah. And it would have killed him. And yeah. I, I wouldn't be sat here today. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just all about luck, innit? Right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So, uh, don't know, that's about it, really. That's, that's, <laughs> that's uh, the point. That's the political that's What was the point, point again? That you, there for, for, for well, the grace of God's eye. Yeah, no, he's saying, he's saying, you know, you should count our blessings because, yeah. you know, anything can happen. Yeah. You sure, never know what's around sure. the corner. Sure. Yeah, that's it's what like if Carl hadn't met us, he'd still be in that little room making jingles. Now, he is a respected household name. Do you think <laughs> he packed the book <laughs> before he left home? To become homeless, he thought, well, I'm gonna need the clothes, I'm gonna need the cigarettes, I'm gonna need the dog and the piece of string, and I probably need some, probably gonna need some reading literature as well, because I'm gonna get pretty bored, like, just sitting in the street yeah. begging all day. Do you, so, maybe, maybe it's so one maybe of those- I should take- to, I wanna catch up on, um, some, uh, some of the stuff I haven't read, you know. Or maybe it's one of those themed holidays, you know those trendy middle class people? Right. They go on, like, the adventure holidays and danger holidays, you know, maybe the, the latest one, amongst sort of, like, yuppie types, yeah. is, uh, homeless holidays. Exactly. Yeah. They, they, they pay, like, ten thousand pounds. Exactly. And they really they get, get a little the area of sort of the streets of Soho. And people come up to them and abuse them. Yeah. They're all Shattered paid, they're them. all yeah, actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They get beaten uh, up at night when they're sleeping under a bridge. They, 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 you know, they get to, to, to try a really safe sort of form of heroin. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. uh, uh that they, sounds brilliant. No, that's, that's worth marketing, Rick. Themed holidays. Themed home. holidays like that. Home, you could have homeless. Yeah. You could have, like, rent boy holidays. <laughs> Find out what it's like to be yeah. a red boy for three yeah, weeks. Yeah, and then, yeah, they have to, they have and to make a little bit of money on the they side. They have to wean them off it. Exactly. <laughs> at yeah. the end, they go, no, don't keep, don't, don't keep, keep sucking it. it. You can stop You're finished now. You've, yeah. You're, you're, you're a bank manager again. <laughs> I just, I've just got the taste for it, to be honest. <laughs> well, can that happen? I, that, can that, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's worth knowing if that if that is a possibility. Look, Carl, that's worth look, Carl's worried. What? Well, yeah. We haven't said anything. We haven't said anything, we haven't said anything wrong, Carl. Can Don't there's be no complaints. We haven't said anything. The words suck, as far as oh. I can work out. No, it's not a banned word on the radio. Is it, is it Rockbusters time? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Rockbusters. Well, let's let's play a tune and we'll come back with Rockbusters. Mm. Are mm. we going to hear your mums before mm. we have Best yours. holiday I've ever had. Mm. 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 I'll get mm. a taste for it. Mm. New American band called My Morning Jacket from the Sweat Bees EP that's called Low Dang. Like that? Yeah, nice. It's good, yeah. Um, I brought in some adverts, my favourite adverts to play. Really? Yeah, that's all, they're all new ones as well. We got those now? Can, can we hear them? Do you want to do them now or keep, oh. them, keep them listening and play them later? No, do them now. Yeah? Oh, I, yeah, they are good. XFM indeed, Steve. Absolutely. Sorry, uh, I'm just fiddling around here. Uh, what are you looking at? Well, I'm just looking at some of the emails, uh, and if I can find it, I've got an absolute treat from you. Go on. Dickie Anderson. Is he Anders, uh, he's emailed in Richard again. Anderson, our yeah. biggest fan. Biggest fan. He said, uh, dear Ricky, sorry for not tuning in recently, only I've been busy watching a puddle evaporate. <laughs> Glad to hear you haven't tinkered with the show's winning formula by trying to introduce any quality into it. <laughs> That's from, uh, Richard <laughs> Anderson. So, uh, good okay. to have Dickie Anderson listening again. Oh, Because he's, uh, he just keeps us on our toes you know. Yeah. And, uh, good work, Rich. Thanks for that. I wonder what he looks like. Dickie Anderson? Yeah. I think he's a good looking guy. For some reason, I've always imagined him as being slightly older, with maybe a beard. Oh, no, you know I, what think, I, mean? like I think of him, of I think of him sort of cords and now and sweater. Definitely cords. Gla I, I think he looks like, um, maybe the Proclaimers. Yeah, but right. again, with a beard or at least a moustache. Yeah. I don't know why I'm seeing some kind of facial hair. And he's sort of like, he, he's sort of, uh, he likes the Cure and the Swiss Snap, but, uh, and, uh, he snarls at everything. He thinks everything's pure out. Yeah. I bet he yeah. prefers Radio 5. <laughs> Do you think Radio 5? Yeah. Five, uh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. And yeah. four. I bet he's a real music snob as well. I bet it's like, there's certain bands, it's like rubbish. The Blazing Squad, rubbish. All pop music, rubbish. Britney Spears, rubbish. Is, is, is this defamation of character? Um, he slagged you off enough times, Rick, and the show. I don't know and if I'm only saying all... it's my opinion, exactly. I imagine, so, uh, Yeah, I mean, you we know. don't know, I mean, you know, he, he could be a lovely guy. I'm getting, to be honest, I'm getting to like him. What I like about Richard is he, he's willing to say what he thinks. 
Well, it's not- it's more than that. It's a bit like Eminem. No, it's- no, it's- it's more than that. He actually hits on the truth too often yeah. for my liking. Yeah, well that's- I mean, this is a shoddy show with very, very little to offer. You gotta remember though, it is a, uh, bronze winning <laughs> show. <laughs> we did win a bronze <laughs> award at the Sony's <laughs> last year. One yeah. of the most coveted of the awards. Yeah. The yeah. bronze. Uh, to, in my- in my opinion, the bronze is slightly better than the gold. Well, a lot of people don't win the bronze, Rick. You gotta remember that, that there's not many people who win the gold, bronze. gold, gold, you know, gold's got no intrinsic value, it's just a currency, and in my opinion, bronze is better. <laughs> yeah. In a way. Carl, Rockbuster, well, Jim, <clears throat> Carl. Yeah, no, listen. we, uh, yeah. we did get a bronze, but this year, we introduced Rockbusters. Things <laughs> will be changing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, yeah, hey, we didn't introduce Rockbusters, Carl, please don't tar us with that brush. Yeah. You introduced it. And also, it. do you remember the, do you, do you remember the show that got that bronze, was the show with the complaint that yeah. was upheld by the radio authority. Was it really? Yeah, the show that got the- got the award and was nominated was the one with the only upheld complaint we've ever had. Do you think if we hadn't discussed that particular subject for quite as long we could have got the silver? Um, I think it was the mention of- and I, I say this meaning male birds- yeah. oh. Of all the cocks. Right. Yeah. But do you think the Sony committee was going, I enjoyed the show, if yeah. they hadn't yeah. mentioned cocks, yeah. meaning birds- Yeah, meaning birds, yeah. So I'd, I'd have given it the silver. Yeah. So, uh um, Yeah. <laughs> Carl getting nervous. Rockbusters then. Yep. Uh, chance to win all that stuff Steve was talking about before. Uh-huh. Um, we give initials and a cryptic clue and it's a band and there's three yeah. of them and you email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Right. Do you want some of my mums? Well, I think before you give us your own, we should hear your mums just to sort of set the tone and for well, people to get their heads around the whole she idea. She sent some more, they're still not that up to scratch. <laughs> um, <laughs> first one, this group are nice on toast. Where were they? Jam. Yeah. Which one? Jam. Okay. Marmalade would have worked. Marmalade's just as good, yeah. yeah. This man liked his wine. This man liked his wine? Dean uh. Martin. <laughs> what? <laughs> so no cryptic clue, <laughs> just a man who drinks? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> But like, isn't there like <laughs> a myriad of rock stars and pop stars it. who like booze? I know. <laughs> that's his wine! I don't but think anyone would have ever got that. <laughs> that's fantastic! <laughs> this man liked his wine, Dean Martin! This man liked his golf. <laughs> oh, clubby, clubby, oh, clubby chip face. No, um, uh, Bunk, Bunk, Bunker Bing Smith. Bing Bing Crosby, yeah. yeah. He liked his golf. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's genius. This, this man, man liked his wine. Uh, just a couple more. <laughs> Hope you're not speeding when you meet these. The police. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great! And, uh, oh. see any other good ones? Oh. Uh, sounds like these lads work for the <laughs> hospital. The, 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 the porters. Um, Say that again? Sounds like these lads, uh, work for the hospital. Jerry and the pacemakers. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we'll, we'll- Carl, I have to say, if there was ever, in the future, any doubt that you were your mother's son, <laughs> that would pay that. <laughs> Believe that me, you great. are a chip off well, the old Okay, block. well let's um, let's uh, so we have a little record and then educating Ricky and Rockbusters. So so I'm really proud of the, of the prizes. <coughs> Jerry Halliwell's yoga video, uh, DVD, I think it's the latest one in that particular series. So if you've already <laughs> worked yourself up to, you know, you're looking pretty good, but yeah. there's a little bit of uh, flab maybe around the arse or breast area, then Jerry can help you out there. Yeah. We've got uh, Only Fools and Horses, this is the Christmas special from last year. Um, Jonathan Ross was giving that one on his morning show this morning, I don't know if they're just oh, trying to get rid of him. Um, top uh, of the morning to you from Terry Wogan, that's his, uh, <laughs> 2 CD. I'm sure they were giving that away as You've well, got though. the likes of Love Theme from Top Gun, obviously Take My Breath Away by Berlin, that's on there. Uh, what else we got? We got The Pretenders, you mentioned them earlier, Alison Moyer's on there. Uh, Annie Lennox featuring Paul I Simon. still call her Alf. Loaf is on there, I'm talking of the meat variety. Oh! Obviously. <laughs> um, Miss Tina Turner on Silent Wings, there's a, you know, an incredible selection there, perfect for saying mum or, um, a, a deaf aunt. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's, uh, the <laughs> Manic Street Preacher's Greatest Hits DVD. Aunt? Anyway, how's your aunt, the, the one who farted for five minutes, Carl? Also got the U2D, uh, well. What's up with her? She'll have the best chill out album ever. Uh, that's all right. Yeah, she'll yeah, be alright. Yeah. Okay, guys, so that's the prizes up for grabs. So we're having two conversations <laughs> yeah. there. I, I think we're a little bit too relaxed in this show. Sure. I mean, people tuning in will just think, do those three people know they're going out live? Or is yeah. that a conversation, like, between the records? Yeah. I, I, it's, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> it probably <laughs> sounds like, yeah, the record is playing. <laughs> yeah. We get the record playing yeah. and we're just chatting. Oh, dear. <laughs> What we got? What we got, Carl? What we got? 
Carl, come on then. Right. I need some education. I no, need, it's uh, Rockbusters. I know, but I need education. I need I some know, education. I know, I know you But we've promised some Rockbusters. Educating Ricky, I will be ditching before Christmas. Why? <sighs> it will be going. Really? Why? Because there's nothing it's, out there. It's just struggling. I was thinking on the way in today, I can either do, um, doing something more with Steve, because we've done, like, the Ricky angle. Either yeah. we can do, um, Educating Steve. No, either like a, a bit of a call my bluff type thing, but it's like a con merchant and I have to like trick you. Okay. Right, con so merchant, I'm the I like con it. And you're the merchant. And okay. then, or I was thinking something that you just do, do some work and you have a moan for a bit. Okay. And that's a bit, that, that's like a wine merchant that you just like <laughs> whine on about something. <laughs> Uh, again, just, I, I, I the pun comes these, first with uh, yeah, you, doesn't it? You've yeah. worked out that first. Yeah. That's like, uh, okay. I told you I've come up with a couple of sitcoms for me. Go on. One is I've got an imaginary navy called Merchant's Navy. Yeah. It's just, it's, I've got yeah. a navy in it. And the pre premise is I've got a navy. Yeah. And another one is I live in- And that's as far as he's got as well. Yeah, that's just all I've come up with. If, you, if you've got any ideas there, uh, Carl, yeah. that'd be much appreciated. Yeah. Another one is I live in quite a salubrious part of North London, and that's called Merchant of Little Venice. And I live in Little Venice. Uh, I d again, I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens, but, uh, mm. any ideas, Carl? You know, <laughs> I've got one where I play an Italian waiter, and it's called Shut Up a Gervais. Yep. That's so, uh, good. We're, we're, that's the one we're working on there, actually, to follow up with the office. Do you like that? Yeah. 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 Is it, yeah. We'll do something with that. Yeah. But <laughs> at the moment, we've got Rockbusters. Okay. okay. So, uh, these are mine. Um, number one, you've been dunking that for too long. That's L B. Right, so too oh god, that's too easy. That's yeah, too I easy. I always tease them, don't I? Give them something to make them feel like they're gonna win something, and then I, I hit them hard with a tricky one. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, go on. So the first one. So that's the cryptic clue for a band or an artist. Their initials are L B, and yeah. the cryptic clue. You've been dunking that for too long. Yeah. So that's the first one. Second one. Uh, you won't be able to play that game in this pub because the table ain't big enough. Right. <laughs> Could be an old artist, could be a new one, could be a band. What's the initials? Uh, F D. Alright? F D. You won't be able to play that game in this pub. The table ain't big enough. And the final one, uh, well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's over. Right? Yeah. That's that's the third cryptic clue. The yeah. initials being G K. Right? Yeah. Well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's over. They're the three clues. All you gotta do is email in ricky.gervais. <laughs> That's great! That's genius! Which one? The last one. All right. That yeah, is genius. That's the best one you've ever done. All right. Uh, ricky.gervais. <laughs> That's great. I don't know the middle one. At UK. Okay. Emailing them three answers, you win the stuff. We have still got educating Ricky. <laughs> Looking forward to uh, that. Go on, let's well. have one, let's have one. No, I'll give, I'll give you the titles. Give me the titles, yeah, got you. Yeah. Right, you've got, um, three bits of info that's gone on in the world. Yeah. Or, uh, well, possibly. Sort of, sort of uh, information. Older times? Old Never go time further back than the seventeenth century, do we? Well, uh, no, let's, 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 let's make it clearer. There's three bits of information <laughs> that people have put on the net. <laughs> whether or not they're true. Well, <laughs> yeah. Different issue. And that he still gets it a little bit wrong in oh, translation. Always, yeah. And sort of adds bits to it. <laughs> yeah. Go right, on. So we've got, uh, I love it when he plays out those historical dialogues. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yeah. like the fifteenth century where he goes, so anyway, a bloke says to himself, <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. <laughs> so the horse isn't happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go on. Right, so the three that you've, uh, you've got a pick from, you've got, uh, get your kit on, we're off down the butchers. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh. let's get your kit on, we're off down the butchers, yeah? Uh, we've right. got, um, wash up with you. <laughs> <laughs> wash up with wash you. Wash up with you! Ah! Yeah? And, yeah. Uh, the last one, I couldn't really think of a, a good title for, so yeah. it's just, uh, <laughs> Why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, play a record! We've got to make this oh. into a book. This has got to be a book made oh, for Christmas. Oh, God! Chapter headings. <laughs> <laughs> Oasis, live forever on XFM 104.9. Right, we're in the swing of things. It's, my, it's mine and Steve's favourite bit of the whole show. This is what we do this show for now. Educating Ricky. Yeah. Go for it, Carl. You said that learning can't be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll go for the one. What's the one about the butcher going down the butcher shop? You've got to uh, get your kit on. We're off down the butchers. Yeah. You going for that one? Yeah. Well, do you know the saying? Okay. Um, <laughs> don't let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know what it means? Yeah. Well, don't give away a secret. Right. Well, do you know how it came about? No. No. Well, 
Uh, ages ago. <laughs> before, like, <laughs> ages ago. Seventeenth century? Yeah, before, like... Yeah, yeah, seventeen's good. Yeah. Before, like, you know, proper butchers and Jewhursts and supermarkets and that, you used to get these blokes who, oh, right. who sold meat. Right. Right? Butcher, butchers, they were called then, I think. Yeah, yeah, but the difference was they didn't stay in the same place, they moved about. Right, so they'd turn up on a street corner, right. and he'd have like loads of carrier bags of like carrier uh, bags. <laughs> yeah, with you know, with meat in and that, and people would plastic be like, carrier bags. Yeah, uh, with whatever. mobile butcher on them. Yeah, yeah. Right, so uh, <laughs> and an email would, address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. People went right. Yeah, I need some meat. Right, so they'd uh, <laughs> they'd go up to this bloke, and uh, say, "What have you got?" And he'd say, "Well, I've got a got a you know, you can have a, a bag full of pig, or you can have a uh, whatever a bag full of chicken." Whatever, yeah. and they go, yeah, how much? They go, oh, you know, call it, call it a fiver, whatever. Yeah. And um, they they buy them, and to to make more money, they didn't always fill the bag with what they said was in it. Oh, I, knew, I thought that might be the case. Right. Yeah. So what did they, they ever do? put cats in there? Yeah, but I don't see what what. Okay, so sometimes they would put a cat in the bag they put and pretend it was bag. chicken or whatever else. Yeah, so but why was a cat any cheaper than a chicken? Because cats are wandering around the streets, aren't the chickens? Aren't so they would get a chicken. They put a chicken on the top so that when they look in it, they'd go, "Yeah, that's all right." Got a bag full of chicken. They'd get home to make the dinner, yeah. and they'd be like, "What are we having tonight?" And they'd go, "Well, you'll never guess." <laughs> and they'd they'd have like you know, well, you can have a chicken leg, and you know, but it would be it would be a cat. Got, yeah. <laughs> they'd have to defrost a pizza. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Did they mind that they were eating cat then, in the in those days? He didn't say. He just was saying about the saying, uh, "Don't let the cat out of the bag." It's like you know. Uh, if they see that, they're gonna go mad. I, I'm, I'm, I'm mildly disappointed with this story. It's all right if it's true, but you know, there's something about it's just. I want to know more. He always leaves yeah. it. Is it Carl doesn't quench your thirst for knowledge? He creates more. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Well, yeah, he's like the pot noodle of information. Yeah, do you know, I, I, he never. I want to go. I'm not nourished by it. It's if, it's if for every fact he tells me, there's ten others that spring yeah. up that yeah. I have to get clear. Uh, well, so it was the people that were doing this. It was the it was the dodgy butchers that coined this phrase. Were they saying to each other, "Don't let the cat out the bag"? I <laughs> what I mean by that, Jack, is don't let them see the cat. Yeah, what yeah. we've stuffed in there. Yeah, dodgy butcher. That's another phrase, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the first one. Uh, is that a euphemism or is that yeah, dodgy butcher? As is meat delivered round the back. Sure. So that's that's that one. So let's get your kit on. What does that mean? It's a, uh, a euphemism for uh, homosexuality. Okay. And meat, presumably, in that means different things. It doesn't. It, it's it's a word that is also a male would it, bird. Would it mean chicken or cat <laughs> necessarily in that context? <laughs> or well, I suppose it could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Carl's look, just looks, look at him, it, it, Carl looks at you like a cat. Yeah. Whenever we leave him behind, if we don't talk, like, straight at him and let him see our lips moving, mm. and it's, you know, monosyllabic and very easy to Look, he's lost, he's lost in that conversation there, he just drifted off, didn't you, Carl? No, I just was also thinking on animals and that, something else I was gonna use. Go on. Was, um... Is this it... isn't a radio show, is it? I just suddenly caught something, this I is no, this is that. nothing. I told you that before, it's, it's been bad today. No, but I mean, it's the way, this, this casual way that it's like we, we almost have no regard for our listener. And I'm not proud of that. I just don't know what to do about it. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know how to do this properly. I, I mean, we're just chatting here. I mean, it's only Anderson who's seen through us. And <laughs> yeah. that surprises me that more people haven't. I mean, what are the figures like? Do people listen to this show? I'll find out for you. You keep saying that. But, um, yeah, there's this parrot. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> apparently it, was, it lives I mean, Rick, it's unique, <laughs> if nothing else. I mean, when you wake up with Woken tomorrow, <laughs> you're not even gonna yeah. hear him start a line with there was this parrot. Go on, there was this parrot, yeah, go on. And it can talk and that. Someone's obviously, t you know, taught it out how to speak and that. And, mm. um, it flew away. Oh. And, and it's living in this church. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, people are at the church doing oh. hymns and that. And Trouble's brewing. In, be in between if the hymns. If that hymns, we, uh, was owned by an old uh, miner who used to swear a lot. Yeah. Well, then the vicar is going to be is going to be really annoyed. That vicar, yeah. that vicar's going to go on. I just hope he stays quiet <laughs> during the vicar's sermons. Yeah, go on. Have you read it? No, go on. 
have you read it? No, go on, no, because that's, that's what happens, right? Go on, tell us, Carl. During, during the hymns, it's sort of effing and jeffing and stuff. Effing really. <laughs> and jeffing? Yeah. And everyone's like going, oh, you know, it's quite funny, really, you know, it doesn't know what it's doing. Mm -hmm. Everyone's having a laugh. Yeah. But it's causing a havoc at funerals. <laughs> <laughs> when did this happen? Uh, uh not, and not, not years ago. John uh, was a much loved man. He was a wanker! Yeah. So, anyway, so that was another what story. What can right? you say about Uncle John? Bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I love, I love the fact that when you look at things, you go, "That's interesting." A parrot that swears at funerals, That'd be and it stays with you. You see, for a simple man, you retain an awful lot of knowledge. It's just all rubbish. All you Do you know what I mean? If you just replaced all this rubbish with good stuff, yeah. you'd be an intellectual, yeah. really, because <laughs> I mean, your your attention is fantastic. Yeah. So, so I lose you again there, did I? So Was it the word retention? We've still got, uh, wash up with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should we play a record and do wash yeah, up with you? Yeah, yeah. We'll play a bit of Aqualunga. <laughs> Aqualunga! <laughs> Alright, that's Aqualung. Uh, good time's gonna come, in it? Right, Carl, come on in, educating Ricky. So, don't let the cat out of the bag, that's where that uh, comes from. Mm -hmm. Comes from a crafty butcher. <laughs> right, go on then. So, the next, uh, little headline is, uh, Wash Up With You. Wash Up With You, go on. You wanna know about that? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> it's a survey that they did. <laughs> survey that they did this week. They? Yeah, some, some university did some survey. Brilliant. Did a world test on yeah. washing up. Yeah. And, uh, each country were given 140 pots to clean. Um, Brits were the quickest. Yeah? Yeah. Um, Turkey were the slowest <sighs> at washing up. The Turks. Uh, it's not because the little fellas that work in the kitchens with no, is it? They can't reach. Spain. <laughs> Spain were the cleanest and the, uh, Germans were pretty good as well, so. <laughs> I don't know where to start with this. <laughs> I, I, honestly, Steve, I don't know where to start with that. I Look at his face. You, it was really light, right? We've had the <laughs> parrot, right? These are things that I found. Found the parrot, right? <laughs> I've told you about the dog in the car wash. Right, you didn't tell me about that. You said there's a car wash for a dog. That's all you told me. Yeah, but the parrot. You said there's a parrot. What? It's a problem at funerals. Yeah. That's nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. And, Do you understand? And uh, I, they used to eat cats. What else have we got? There's an elephant in India. We saw feet. Why? There's an elephant in India with sore feet. Now I'm interested. Why? Um, some- <laughs> Tap uh, dancing? <laughs> <laughs> Why? So yeah, I didn't write He's trying to about. break Roy Castle's record. <laughs> <laughs> He's still going. Come on. Come on. What is it? What is it? Think. It's a uh, elephant and it was really old. It was about 76. Right. And it had sore feet because it's old and-, and they don't make stairs and that big, do they? the roads are bad and that. Yeah, go so, on. So, um, they said, what are we gonna do? And the hmm. town was like, oh, you know, we're used to seeing it around, it's part of the thing, you know, we don't want it to have sore feet. Yeah. So they got some slippers made for it. <laughs> and it had like a picture of the elephant looking happy wearing some slippers. <laughs> I love him! I love Carl, his world! Think of it, where did you see this picture? That was on the internet. <laughs> right. That's a lesson though for any elephants listening. You know, don't wear stilettos to work every no. day. No. Because it can do your feet in. <laughs> so that it's but don't, a... have ele don't elephants have really bad memories? No, they, they have, have really good memories. memories. Oh, do they? Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good then. <laughs> no, I just, I, I just thought they'd forget where they put them. I thought there was something about, <laughs> about elephants having bad, <laughs> bad memories and that. Get, it goes on, where's my slippers? Yeah. I sure I left them by the test. So, oh. so, sorry, there's a, the elephant walking around wearing slippers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was, th that's in, uh, in what India. What kind of slippers? Those sort of old man ones with the sort of checkers. Well, round design. ones, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Big yeah. round ones. There was that going on. And is it happening? Is it happier? I mean, does it feel no, more satisfying? No, it satisfied? looked it, looked it. Did it look- <laughs> <laughs> Don't go and tell, don't go and tell the elephants, please. Uh, uh, what else is there? Uh, hmm. there was a woman who's had a- had a breast in show for 150 grand. Right. Okay. Okay, okay is what? There? What? Third party fire and theft? Don't know, it just had- it had a picture of her with them, like, you know, out. <laughs> 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 I just thought, yeah, you should get them covered. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a proper joke. He's so. done, look at his little face, he smiles. I'd like to see you on one of the sort of TV panel games. If they could bring back sort of celebrity squares, yeah. it would be amazing as the centre square. Oh, that would be Wouldn't incredible. Be or um, on the countdown in Dictionary Corner. Diction- I imagine him in Dictionary well, Corner. Well, come up with cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Helps at all. Yeah. Mem- Memdlant. <laughs> yeah, what does what? that mean, Carl? It's just anything you want it to mean. <laughs> 
Oh, what I've got? <laughs> there, there's a dog that's got a cough in <laughs> Singapore because it smokes twenty a day. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, another one. Another no, no, one. no, no, it's, it's the last one in it, so yeah. we'll save it. The last one we've got is why I don't think Sorry, what was that? Wash up with you, that was it. But they, they put, they, 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 was that it? That they, what, the survey of washing pots <laughs> in hands. I didn't understand, you said, who, you said Italy were the cleanest. No, it, Spain. No, Brits were the quickest. Yeah. We were the quickest, but s Italy was the, the Spain cleanest. was the cleanest. Turkey were the slowest. Yeah. yeah. Spain were the cleanest. But why weren't we clean then? Cause we were washing it, why were we not paying attention to we the- We did it rubbish, we did it quick. We did it quickly, but, but- I don't know what it was being rated on. Who was doing it? Was it Lynette Newman or Ainsley Harriet? She's quick. Both of them are quick. Yeah. Well, they've got like kind of loose slaves that do it for them. Did we, did we use, did we use fairy liquid? Don't know. It didn't, it didn't have Did we use a whole bunch of boys' games? Didn't say that. Just like Lynette. It just said, uh, you know, that, that, that. Who had the softest hands? Who had the softest hands? So I didn't, it didn't say I didn't. Why is it we don't get notified that this is taking place? I don't know. When I was a kid, no one ever said, you know, we need recruits because we're we're doing a survey on who can wash yeah. up the quickest. Are you disappointed in yourself with that one, Carl? It, it is pretty dull, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> and that is why we've got to bring in either con merchant okay. or a wine merchant or, or shut or, up at your face. Yeah. <laughs> would you be able to, if I asked you, if I put you on the spot in the next, sort of after the next record, would you be able to give an example of how Con Merchant would work? I mean, is there something you could do just to sort of s experiment Should we play a record? Should we play a record? <laughs> no, play I've got a record? I can do better than that. Yeah. What? Ads. Go on. Oh. XFM. Travis on XFM 104.9 on Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkerton. We're doing Educating Ricky. Right, final one. Come on, Carl. Right, what was it? <laughs> it was, uh. <laughs> Why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something to write on? Yeah. Yeah. Cause Snappy. I couldn't, well I couldn't think of a heading for it. It's basically, uh, Go on. people who have tattoos, I've never understood it, right? Um, that they have something put on their arm. Well, sorry, have we started the educate? Is this part of it? Are you educating me? This is something that I, I, will be useful in my life that I didn't know about. Yeah. Go on then. <laughs> no, it's just like they've got, they've got a machine <laughs> out, right. right, that, um, does tattoos. Um, you, you, uh, you come up with a design you want and you sort of, it, this machine scans it and, uh, you put your arm in this thing and you press print or whatever and then it, it does the tattoo on your hand or on your What, arm. like loads of little needles that follow a pattern? Yeah, computer, basically, is it? yeah. Is it a real tattoo? It's a proper It's a proper tattoo. one. The fella said, um... Well, as long as it goes out, it pierces the skin with a, with a... a I just a, wondered a if it's one of those kind of, you know, those kind of... No, it ones. must be lots of, lots of little needles or a moving needle that can go Sorry, along. Sorry, but how is this cleaned, like, in between each person? Don't know, probably, I don't know. Well, no, it's not, it's only that if it's one needle, it's just the head, isn't it? If it's one needle that moves, right. does it like a like loads of little... Um, what are we gaining from a, a machine doing it? Just because you know they're not gonna sort of mess it up. But hold on, how would you keep your arm still? Cause your skin moves slightly, it's, it's the machine it's sort of strapped to your arm. Right, so it's I mean, so the fella said that the tricky thing was in all this, it was the fact that, um, you know, nobody would let him test it out on anyone else, so he had to do it himself. But did it work? Because the thing is with the tattoo yeah, works, artist, yeah. they can see when your skin's moved and they can see what they've done and they keep wiping it and looking, whereas a machine's just got to trust itself. Yeah. So, I think one needle would- could go wrong. If it was a lot of needles, it just, that it just came down, like, you know, a thousand needles that was an imprint. Yeah. But, no, th it, obviously I'm asking someone who's, uh, uh, hasn't delved any further than there's a machine that can give you a tattoo. That's all you've got at the moment, isn't it? Well, I'm- yeah, basically. That's what you've got. I mean, that's that's what I've got because I'm not a fan of tattoos. I don't. But where did you read this again? This was internet. Uh, this was on the internet. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. And I, d I just don't understand why people do it. That's that's what got me attention. Because me. Um, so what have what have I learned from this? Um, that if you if you wanted to get one, you know, you can get one done by a machine now. <laughs> you know, people say machines are sort of taking over and that. <laughs> and and there's another one. But it's just the fact, I mean, I don't know. I, I so give us the snappy title of this, this education <sighs> Why again. Why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something to write it on? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always think when I see people with, with loads of tattoos. Like, there's that fella who we were talking about the other week in Scotland oh. who, who was covered 99% in tattoos. Yeah. It's just like, what have you done that for? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't get rid of it now. You've, you've, you've done it now. Yeah. Um, my, one of my uncles, right, Tattoo Stan, he, <laughs> he, um, He's just caked in them. Tattoos. Right. <laughs> I don't think he's my proper uncle, but it's just like <laughs> me, me dad's. Tattoos, Stan. No, my dad's. That's got, that's a province in Russia, isn't it? 
My dad's got loads of mates who, when like- When you say he's not your proper uncle? I don't, do you know how, like, when someone's going to join the school? Right, Uncle Stan. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it was like, there was, um, my dad had loads of mates like that. There was John the Screw. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, he either works in a prison or he likes to have sex. Cabby. <laughs> Cab driver. <laughs> okay. There was Jimmy the Hat. I don't know what he Jimmy did. Jimmy the Hat? Yeah. Yeah. And, Did he uh, wear a hat? No. No. There was, um, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. You sure he wasn't a relative? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fred the Veg used to get us, like, big bags of potatoes and that. Fred Veg, yeah, okay. And there was, there was Tattoo Stan. Right. And he was just caked in them, and I used to always look at him thinking, why have you done that? I must have only been, like, you know, six I or suppose seven. If, if you're born with a name like Tattoo Stan, Exactly. You're desperate, aren't and you? Were really? they like a 1950s gang? I'm worried yeah, about. Like, uh, I'm worried doing, about doing a bank job. What was his name? The Hat. What was his Jim, name? Jimmy the Hat. I'm worried mm -hmm. about Jimmy the Hat. Yeah. Not having a hat. <laughs> I don't understand it. Are you sure he didn't have a hat? Not when I met him. Did he ever wear a hat? <laughs> I didn't see him that much. Do you think it was a joke, like you know, when um, y your mate sort of like you know uh, eight foot and huge, you call him? Little Shorty. John or Tiny. Mm. Do you think- Well, the fact that he never wore yeah, a hat. Yeah, they went, hold on, I've, I've noticed some hat about Jim. Go on. No hat. And I go, oh, true, let's call him Jim the Hat. <laughs> Jim the Hat, yeah. But me, um, me Uncle Stan, he had like loads of them. He did, did them himself. Oh dear. And it was always <laughs> oh, thing. God. What was it, what was it things like? It was, he had like the- A cross. Cut, cut here cut one. Cut here, on made in neck. Britain. And if you're going to do them yourself, I'd say at least make sure you're, good, you're sort of a good drawer. Yeah. And don't and do it, it in the mirror so it comes out backwards. Well, that that was the other thing. But, like, I remember he did, um, I mean, names are all right. He had, like, all his kids' names down his arm. <laughs> and, right. uh, what are they called? Yeah. Oh, God. It's <laughs> Tattoo Stan Jr. Yeah. And, um. Paul shits the bed. <laughs> but, um. I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wabai <laughs> Kate. Yeah, yeah. But he has, uh, <laughs> Frankie never amounts to anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on. So he had like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Johnny, I don't think he's mine. <laughs> So, he did uh, all this stuff. Oh, I don't even know why I'm telling you about tattoos. No, 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 I, Carl! Hey, so, I to be I, honest. I don't know that if, I don't know if, maybe you just have to picture this, but my picture, <laughs> my sister she took, had to take a photo once, she was working in like a factory. Not to denigrate people who work in factories, but there happened to be a particularly oddball, kind of lank-haired, weird guy living, uh, working in this factory. And he made his own, he did his own tattoos, and she took a photo of it because she was so extraordinary. He'd drawn it himself. Now, bear in mind, it was the kind <laughs> of thing you saw when you were doing art when you were like, <laughs> 15. <laughs> this was the sort of person who designed their own, like, rock heavy rock album cover. <laughs> yeah. He's that sort of person. <laughs> so, pr I mean, like, was it, was it a dragon draw? with breasts? You're not far off, Rick. No. You're not far off. I'll tell you what it was. He had this tattooed on his back. It took up his entire back. She took a photo of it for me. He drew it himself. He had it tattooed himself. And it was just too much detail. Too yeah. much detail for a tattoo. It needs to be fairly simple, I think, to make a mm, tattoo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was... <laughs> <laughs> it was a, n a naked female vampire having a shower. <laughs> why was she having a shower? Having a shower, well, that's why she was naked. Yeah. And so she had- she she'd was been out, she'd, uh, she was, uh, presumably, uh, she'd been, uh, been out, been 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 out, been 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 out a lot of blood. Well, yeah, well, she, 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 uh, she was naked, so she, you could see her, 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 her naked body. Yeah. Uh, she's quite a beautiful vampire, yeah. relatively speaking. Yeah. Um, although the symmetry of her face was somewhat off. Yeah. The only thing I think that gave well, her away- bad spine. Was that she had, um, she did have some pointed teeth. I right. mean, I think that was how you knew she was a vampire. Right. Was she looking- but, um, was the she fact looking... that she was having a shower was- Yeah, that is weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it well, but he sort of drew he, 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 he said to the eye, he said, listen, I, I want a, a naked bird, right? But I don't want to be good and he goes, well, we could put her in the shower, because then they went, pop well, her in the shower. That at least gives some kind yeah, of justification that's the plot, that's the plot. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's justified <laughs> within the story <laughs> she's in the shower. <laughs> sure, sure, okay, yeah. Yeah, we'll have that. So, Carl. So. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, any other nicknames your friends of your family had? What was your nickname, Carl? Just, uh, Pilkey. Really. <laughs> Because for a minute I thought Carl the Veg would have made a lot of sense. Yeah, Carl the Veg. And what, what, why has your dad got a little tattoo, dopey twat, on his arm? <laughs> right, we'll do the answers to, uh, Rockbusters next, yeah? Brilliant. <laughs> Buzzcocks. Still sounds brilliant, that. It is a cracker. They're from Manchester as well, Carl. So they got a little bit of pride there, eh? I think one of them's, uh, one of my mate's dad's. Really? Yeah, I think so. What's his nickname? Well, his name was, I don't really want to say his name. Oh, yeah, okay. Laurie, his first name was. Yeah. Still, uh, still is, probably. Yeah. Uh, it was good well, you know those little fellas at school that didn't know each other, weren't related and weren't friends because it would be too obvious, that they had webbed 
um, hands and big heads. Yeah. What were they, did they have any nicknames? It, again, too obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Go on. Well, oh, big head, or, you know. Sure. Oh, I bet you're good at juggling, or- Frog right. twins. Yeah. Can I just interrupt you guys, cause we've just had an email here, um, I hate to query you, Carl, <laughs> and you're educating Ricky section, cause I know you put a lot- don't read this, let me just read it for you. Um, just had an email here from Olivia, and this has also been corroborated by someone else, I, I forget who, who it was. She was just- she just tuned in, and she just heard you explaining the expression, letting the cat out of the bag. Sure. Uh, it's all to do with cats that were put in bags yeah. by- by dodgy butchers, <laughs> possibly the 17th century, we're not too sure. <laughs> um, anyway, she claims- well, uh, let me see, she, she says, uh, she uses both the words twaddle and crap, uh, in relation- in relation to your definition. Uh, she says, letting the cat out of the bag is an old shipping expression from when sailors used to get flogged for their misdemeanours. The cat the is cat, the cat of nine it tails, of course which uh, it is. is a kind of whip thing that you, they used yeah. to keep hanging in a bag below deck. If yeah. it was discovered that a sailor had done something wrong, the cat would be let out of the bag yeah. and you'd get a whipping. Of course it is. Don't let the cat out of the bag, that's meaning to cover something up with a huge She's secret. talking nonsense, right? No, she's not. That's she the is. truth. That's because the, the truth. one I read about that was there's not enough room in here to swing a cat, right? And that was people who worked on a boat. Yeah, well, that's the same Well, that's fine. They could have two expressions for the same thing. They're not going to keep going on about people working on a boat to get those assignments. What you can't about? have two phrases about the same thing! Can't they're these not have going going to do with their time. Think how many- just coming up yeah. stuff Think like how that. many metaphors have birds in them and, you know, uh, uh, it's ridiculous. Why can't you have- you can have as many sounds as you like about anything, Carl. Yeah, There's well, not a rule. They don't go, we've made one up about yeah. the cat and nine tails. Well, cheers for that, Oliver. Um, <laughs> Olivia. Olivia. Yeah. Don't, don't see your email coming up with the Rockbusters answers, so <laughs> well, let's, you uh, better give us the answers. Let's again. give them out. Uh, the first <laughs> one was um, you've been dunking that for too long. That yeah. was LB. Uh, Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit. Yeah, got that one. Uh, the third one, we'll jump to that one because you've got it. Uh, well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's all over. That was GK. That's a great one. That's Glad, glad it's night. Glad it's night. Glad it's night. That's glad that it's is night. brilliant, Carl. And the one that uh, you're both having a problem with, uh, you won't be able to play that game in this pub. The table ain't big enough. FD. Go on. Fats Domino. Yeah. What? The dominoes. You play dominoes in a pub. The the dominoes fat. Pub tables are quite small. You won't be able to play that game in this pub. Fats Domino. Rubbish. <laughs> so, do you want to pick a winner? Random rubbish. Winner? Well, winner. you say it's rubbish, but plenty of people got the right answer. Rubbish. Um, Who do you want to go with? The bunch of, um, slightly rubbish prizes <laughs> is going to Elliot K <laughs> from Chigwell in Essex. Uh, well done to Elliot. I, I just, w uh, can, before we go, can we just get an, an email off Anders? Cause I think he must, oh, I think we've probably turned him round with this show. <laughs> I would have thought so. I think he's gonna be say saying, coming to us with his tail between his legs, saying, <laughs> sorry lads, <laughs> a blinding <laughs> show. I was wrong, you were right. Yep. Yeah. Alright. So uh, song for the Lovers is very exciting this yeah, week. Yeah, uh, we haven't had a song for the, uh, the Lovers or the Ladies for quite some time. Let's yeah, combine so, the two. Sorry, and sorry, a bit yeah. of John Martin, May You Never, let's end with Beautiful that this week. We'll see you next time. So, yeah. Bye. Yes, yeah, He's one of my favourite artists now. I just think, uh, I, he's so, I, I don't know why he's not ballistic. Mm. He's got everything. He's like one of our best rock stars. Mm hmm mm hmm I'm Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Hello there. You're Steve Merchant. I am indeed. Uh, Carl Pilkington over there. Big day today. Really? Yeah, for Carl. He hasn't been looking forward to it. He's been whinging in the week. A couple of things. He thinks he's overworked. He thinks he, he thinks he's, uh, overworked here and he's stressed and he's got to do DIY. MTV are coming in, in, right, to give him the chance of his li a, a lifetime to do a, just a, a little, uh, screen test and he's going, well, I'm not gonna look good, am I? They're not gonna, well, why? He said, well, I've got a round head and I'll be wearing headphones. <laughs> and, uh, he's, he's not made an effort. He thinks, oh, they'll put them off. He said, they won't even press record. He's got a spot on his head. Uh huh, uh huh. I mean, you yeah. know what I mean? Also- Carl, you're not looking forward to it. You're not excited about it. It's a great opportunity. Why is it a great opportunity? Why to get on that? MTV. No, but- It's, it's money for a rope, isn't it? Yeah, but look what's happened to people like, um, Jeremy Speak, or whatever his name is. Jeremy Speak, yeah. Yeah, and, um, Yeah, slightly different. Slightly different. Why is it? Well- See? Y y you're- you're making it in the industry and you've got- you've got something to give. He- he happened to be around when they were filming an airport. <laughs> oh, well. Do you see the difference? Alright, the other one then, who's on a boat. <laughs> Jamie Same Donald, thing, although at least she had a well. skill. She had a skill, you know, she, she can sing, you know. Well, it's, it's just- I, d I, d I think it can all go wrong, do you know what I mean? Well, of course it can. So can sitting in your little room moaning about nothing happening in the world. You know, he, he wanted to stop educating Ricky, cause nothing had happened. He said, he said, look what happened last week. I scoured the net, he said, all I found was a dog 
in a car wash and a power and a vicar. Uh-huh. Right? I'll tell yeah. you what, there ain't much more going on this week. We're well, talking. Sh- well, listen, me and Steve, yesterday, we took a day off. To prove you wrong, and we've come up with two of the most incredible things I told you about, and they're amazing. <laughs> so there are things out there. Also, just, ju- but just go for truth. Go for truth and science yeah, and that's discovery. What I do, that's what don't, I do. don't, don't yeah. the, the yeah. fact is is strange than fiction. You don't have to resert, d- revert to oh, sort of like yeah. God and ghosts. I know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But the funny thing is, you know, like last couple of weeks I've been saying there's not much going on. Yeah. I found out when I was looking that there was a day in 1930, right? It was right. a Good Friday. There was no news. There was nothing going on. They had to put a music video on or something on the telly because there was nothing going on. <laughs> play a record. We're going to play some classic tracks today. This is uh, Debaser. Pixies, Debaser. I was looking forward to playing that. Came and said, Carl, I'll play that. I was looking. Uh, he put it on. Uh, Lauren just called through and said, We played that in the last half hour. Embarrassing. Oh, uh, yeah. So, it's what really is the point of having a producer if he doesn't l- check things out? So, I mean, it's a good track. I mean, I'm sorry if you heard that twice right. in the last hour. Go so on, go what on, on, to is listen, to, listen to everything all the time. I've been running around. I get in early on a Saturday. We got in about the same time as me. I, I went out and bought you some biscuits, so you're <laughs> happy. I put the coffee on. <laughs> yes. I've sorted what prizes we're going to give away. I've been running to the library getting you certain tracks. Yeah. I can't listen all the time. I'm doing my best. Well, I'm not sure it's good enough. <laughs> I mean, I'm worried when MTV come in, if they've heard this kind of shoddy production, they're gonna start to well, wonder MTV what you play it, the same songs every five yeah, minutes no, anyway. Sorry, are you sort of overworked because you were on Zoe Ball show talking? Oh, hello, what's going on here? Well, I, was, I, I was in the, he was no, exclusively on our show. No, I was in I the car. Seem, I seem to remember, Rick, he was, he was a nobody yeah. that got a chance to come on air and talk about that. And, guess, and what he was getting auditions guess, what, MTV? guess what he was talking about on Zoe's show? Oh, hello. All the jellyfish stuff and all that. Can't believe it. Recycling material that you've done on this show. I phoned in. I phoned in, right, and I went, stop doing materials. I was like, he just hung up on me. That well, I had a job dis- to do. Who do you think you are? Your Look, ego has just gone through Hang the on room. a minute, hang on a minute. What? I had a job to do in the week. They asked me to drive the desk for Zoe, right? They didn't Zoe, say talk. Zoe, yes. if she talks to you, you don't, you can't just ignore her. Yes, you can. Well, you Who can't. is she? <laughs> Uh, Who does she think she is? <laughs> you made a promise to us, a pact, that you were our kind of yeah. monkey. Yeah. What, what I do you. if someone takes time off? I've got to do it. It's my job. Yeah, but you don't it's have not to your talk. job. You don't have to use. You're oh. the head of production. We've given you this special gig. This is like taking you out weekends. Yeah, and exactly. The, you know, if we find out you're getting too much excitement in the week, we'll have to just calm it down. Well, get another little. Well, that's it now. Anyway, it was only last week. <laughs> I, d- I, I, you know, I feel like kind of solid. I feel betrayed. It's like you were having an affair behind our back. Yeah. And, and you rumbled it. He was doing all the stuff. He was doing all his like, oh yeah, jellyfish and this, jellyfish. Yeah, because that. she was asking. And I thought it was a good way of promoting this show, actually. Oh, oh did you mention the show? Yeah, I did at some point. <laughs> did you? What did you say? I just said, uh, more about that on Saturday afternoons. So you talked twice. I only heard you talk once. So you're talking all the time. Well, you... about five times in the week. <laughs> in the full week. Five times. Theory. Right? Really. And one, it was just stuff. You could never be a monk, could you? Chatting away all the Uh, time. Right, what have we got? I play ball as well, to be honest. (laughs) I feel ball's slightly responsible for it. (laughs) Yeah. She can't find her own, you know, gibbon to get on the show. (laughs) Yeah. She can't find her own kind of, you know, loser, then (laughs) don't start stealing ours. Outrageous. Well, coming up, right? Yeah. Maybe we'll get Fat Boy Slim in. Indeed. Next. Yeah. Saturday, if you're listening, um, Slim, you're coming on the show. What's his name? Ernie or something? <laughs> What's Bernie? his name? Norman. Norman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ernie! Yeah. <laughs> oh, know. that's great. Ernie Ball. Yeah. Oh, he really wouldn't change Ernie his Cook. name. Ernie <laughs> Cook. That's it. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. great. Anyway. Go on. Coming up today, uh, we have got Educating Ricky. Mm, right, yeah. Okay. Is this the last one? You've promised it might be. Um, I believe there's a book out. That might help me with this feature, okay. so we'll see how it goes. We might- I was thinking of new features in the week. I've got, um, <coughs> I wanted to come up with a what to do celebrity fact club. <laughs> celebrity fact club. All right. That's, uh, I've just got to get some celebrities in first okay. before we can kick that off. So maybe in the new year, oh, ball and maybe cook. Zoe Ball. Yeah, ball yeah, and cook. Yeah, Start yeah, off. Maybe right. And I've also got um, cook three... and ball stories. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's nice. Good one. <laughs> Cheers. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Yeah. Maybe you could sell that to Zoe Show. <laughs> And, um, I'm also thinking <laughs> through the Ricky hole. Through the Ricky hole? Okay. Yeah. What's yeah. that? That's, uh, 
I'm quite. No, you just got the title again, haven't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. play record. So, uh, <laughs> Rockbusters yeah. coming up as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ha. Wu Tang Clan, Gravel Pit on XFM 104.9. We're playing some great music today. Yeah, but I wonder if we should maybe, uh, you know, it's getting towards Christmas to yeah. think about others. Should we dedicate the show to all the people in the world who maybe are less privileged and less uh, fortunate than us? No. No. Um, okay. Have you, uh, to do the prizes for the uh, prizes. <laughs> okay. Alright, so screw those <laughs> who are less fortunate, is what TV's Ricky Gervais <laughs> thinks. Um, Rick, I know you're a big fan, uh, of the likes of Brian Adams, <laughs> Robert Palmer, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alien Ant Farm, and, uh, obviously, uh, um, ZZ Top. Yeah. And so you'll be enjoying the best air guitar album in the world Brilliant. ever, volume two. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Well, volume one <laughs> wasn't enough. There wasn't no. enough. No. <laughs> okay. um, again, <laughs> we've seemed to be able to give one of these away every <coughs> week. Are you just not sending these out? I mean, these are the same prizes we started this game with, I think, a couple of weeks back. Are you just not sending the prizes out? Yeah, but I want to give, like, more people a chance, because if, if one week they listen in and think, God, I wouldn't mind winning that. Sure. If you if you've got more copies of it, they'll go. Well, I'll listen next week. Okay. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. yeah. So again, this is uh, one of those um, the best songs you've heard on an advert ever. Albums. Main, mainly mobile phones. Mainly mobile phone adverts. Yeah. yeah. Although there is the uh, Smash Mouth <laughs> one, which is used in the Ford Fiesta TV. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Walking on the sun. Oh, I forget what no. it is. Um, uh, the Smashing Pumpkins album that we've given away in the past again. Yeah. I've got a bulk order of those that can't shift them. Um, Wild Weather. I don't know who's interested in this. This what, is, is, uh, is that a double box set VHS of different weather. <laughs> uh, that's be, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, there's that uh, is two amazing. cassette tapes there. It's presented How long by is that uh, Donald McIntyre. It's a thrilling trip with the most exciting forces of our wild and turbulent world. So, so Clouds, I'm right in saying it's storms. it's a double VHS like video set of, of different weather. Yes, brilliant. Yeah, no, it's got. I mean, it includes the fastest winds, oh, the hottest oh, you're desert, um, and the biggest rain machine on the planet. That's oh, on there. I think you have to. Oh God, I, I wonder if they're, I hope they're bringing out another box set soil. Yeah, absolutely. Just goes through different mud. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and this you may be of interest. I've read good reviews of the, uh, the DVD of this. It's, uh, a two disc set. Uh, The Wicker Man, oh, the classic right. 70s film, film, but yeah. uh, it's got a bunch of extras that in there. So that, quite that's actually film. worth having. I would probably throw the rest away. But uh, The, the Wicker Man, get the on DVD Christmas. and it's, yeah, it's quite, very interesting. Yeah, but you'll enjoy that. So, so uh, what, uh, what, this is Rockbusters, is it? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's for Rockbusters. Brilliant. Well, let's do, let's let, I say get the ball rolling now. What, of Rockbusters? Yeah, get the ball rolling. I don't know, I mean, tease them, Rick. Don't, you know, don't, cause, you know, don't sort of <laughs> spunk all the good stuff early on. I mean, well, that's dynamite. You can, you can say spunk, I can't. <laughs> Go on, well, well, we've got, um, actually it's quite good moving it about, cause we might have some new listeners here. Yeah. And I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not after last week, no. Um, <laughs> right, okay, so if you haven't heard it before, I'll give you some initials. It work, you know, it's like initials of an artist or of a it's band. It's Blockbusters. And, and a cryptic clue to who the band is. There's two easy ones, one difficult one. <laughs> uh, first one is, um, that'll never get off the ground. Right. Yeah. That'll never get off the ground. The That'll initial? never get off the ground is the clue. Not LZ. The initials are LZ. You are joking. Two easy ones. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right, and then you've got um, that woman's got her husband's gloves and a pair of her own. <laughs> right. Say it again. That woman has got a pair of her husband's gloves and she's got a pair of her own. That's H H. Right. It's a bit of a difficult one. And then the uh, the last one. You'll get a l uh, you'll get a right load of bacon off them, right? You'll get what? A right load of bacon off them. Uh huh. Um, that's L. L. <laughs> yeah. So uh, once you'll again, get a very right quickly, load of bacon off of them. You'll get you'll get a right load of bacon off them. Uh -huh. So first one that'll never get off the ground. L Z. Uh, that woman has got her husband's gloves and she's got a pair of her own. That's <laughs> H H. Brilliant. And uh, you'll get a right load of bacon off them. That's L. And so it's an email only competition. Email only, uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and we pick a winner before the end. So. And we can win that, that win at Wicker Man. The weather. Best video. of the weather, weather. The best of the weather. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the best of the weather. As a compilation, Channel yeah. 4. Exactly. The uh, winds like to vary. Uh, I, I, I love 1976 Remember weather. Remember this one from August 1979? Oh, warm, isn't it? <laughs> oh, this is warm, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> the best of the weather. I'll tell you what. You remember how we always play, like, great music, mm. usually? Mm, mm, mm. I'm up you're not got another, you're not got another one, have you? You're yeah, I'm gonna do it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is David Bowie driving Saturday. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> What? I'm doing, uh, oh yeah, I'm in the same problem. I know, beating a biscuit. Yeah. Uh, David Bowie driving Saturday. Mm. That's a great track, isn't mm. it? A crash course for the ravers, eh? 
That's what this show is, isn't it, Carl? Crash Course for the Ravers. They tune and they go, what? That's- that's so cool. I wish I was like Carl Pilkington. You reckon? Yeah, definitely. You forgot to uh, read your mum's clues out, didn't you? Yeah, she's- These are just uh, for fun only. This is Carl's mum. She, uh, she listened one week and now she sends him a little example of, uh, Rockbusters every week. She's got, um, what did she send? Um, this group would go well with your Christmas dinner. Cranberries? Yeah. Um, they make a few good cupboards. They what? make a few good cupboards? Yeah. The carpenters. Uh, carpenters. The carpenters. I was thinking of EMF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? I was thinking B&Q. The B&Qs. Uh, this group thinks of lots of things. <laughs> this group thinks of lots of things. Yeah. Uh, go on. Imagination. <laughs> uh, I think they're the best ones. Yeah, they're, well, they're, 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 they're the best ones. Obviously, we want the worst ones then. Uh, here's one more. Uh, she'd really like Blackpool. She'd really like Blackpool. She'd really Run. like Blackpool. Fairground attraction. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Right, so, uh, there's, uh, uh... Does she write anything else in the letter? Or does she just send them, like, <laughs> on a scrawled on the back of, you know, I don't know, a till receipt? She did it with the first one, now it's just, just the rockbusters. Right. So, <laughs> really? She doesn't bother asking how you are, or... Well, I'll speak to her in a week. Right. Phone, so yeah. What kind of conversations right. would you have, then, with your What are you saying? Stuff? Do you moan about how overworked you are and stuff to her? Uh, uh, just, I mean, they're always surprised when I'm getting in late and that. It's like, you know, what have you done today? Oh, I've just got in from work and it's like half past eight at night. A lot of people get home at half eight, Carl. Next. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> just saying, how's the flat going? I was yeah. asking my dad some DIY tips the other day. Mm. Um, you know, usual sort of stuff mm. we talk with your mum and dad, mm. really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. talking about the bisons with them. I was with watching, uh, did you watch the mammals in the week? Oh, I David it. Attenborough? No. I was thinking, actually, right, all this MTV stuff, if there's one reason why I'd like to do it, yeah. is I was watching Attenborough, the, the Mammals program, I reckon I could do something like that. Right. Right. And just have, have like me, <laughs> instead of Attenborough, like a, you know, a young, sort of fresh person, yeah. uh, watching, like, um, certain animals and saying, do we need these? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what right. I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh! What's going on? Death on Earth. Well, that's, that's amazing. Do yeah. we need these? And, no, and, loads the, of and stuff. the audience at home would vote. <laughs> would there be some kind of telephone yeah, like vote? A vote out system? Oh, yeah, the thing is, is yeah. like, I, it's something interesting that Amber was saying the other night <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> Do we need these? on Jonathan Ross's show on his telly show. Right, he was saying uh, he said you could take all the humans off the Earth and it would carry on, but take like some animals off it, and mammals and that. You got problems on your hands. Mm. I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah. So it's like the question is, do we need these? Is that part of the big thing? Right. Like jellyfish. Yeah. We've talked about jellyfish. Yeah. Yeah. So which mammals in particular were you, you talked about? Like Zoe Ball show, haven't you? Hey. <laughs> which mammals uh, were you thinking we don't need when you watched the show the other night? Um. Any in particular that you thought they don't need them? They're not of interest. Well, I like I like whales, but I don't know what they do. I know. <laughs> Uh, okay. And they're, they're taking up quite a lot of room. Sure. Um, <laughs> but stuff like, quite a lot of room. Yeah. but like um, jellyfish, <laughs> I looked into because yeah, you know well, I was I talking about them, them yeah. and um, they were saying they've got no eyes, no art. <laughs> uh, they're something like ninety-seven percent water. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They're blind and they do about 33 miles a day. Right. So it's like, do we need them? Could Pointless. we clear them out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, a big net. That would that would be the, like, the program. What? What? Right. We'll get rid of them. Uh, next week we'll be looking at. Uh, Rhinos. <laughs> I think Something it's like genius. That, yeah. Honestly, I think it's genius. And like going along, sort of like picking up sea enemies and going and just lobbing them into the sea. Well, what do you think about MTV doing that? And then I, I just, in between the bits, play music I play music related, related to, to fish, it. so I could play like fish. Yeah. That rock guy. Or uh, the rock, animals. Rock lobster. Yeah. Or uh, yeah. what else could this we get This could in run there? and run. What, what other songs have got animals in them? The well, monkeys? Could play the monkeys? Yeah, there's about a million, so let's not start this. No, yeah. but, yeah. do you know yeah. what I mean? So, 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 but, so, do we need this? So MTV Carpet. flies you around the world and to the most incredible exotic locations. <laughs> you sort of climb up a tree or whatever next to, I don't know what lives up a tree, or some kind of rare parrot. <laughs> you say, look sloth. at that, it's colourful, sloth. it's interesting. Oh, you like sloths, don't you? No, they just live up trees, but I'd say, do we need them? Mm. Why? Well, what do they do? 
What do you mean? What do they do? What do you want from an animal? Carpentry. What well, do you like, want? I don't, I don't like scorpions, right? Right. But then I found out they look after those, uh, those monkey things. They're not monkeys, they're whatever. lizards! Well, Alright, yeah, them lizards, they look after the lizards. <laughs> so there's a reason. But, but do you need the lizard? Could be well, your next yeah, question. because the local people made shoes out of them. But not when the scorpion protected them, they didn't. Alright, we don't need them then. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So, uh, and so ultimately, you, would anyone decide? I mean, do the animals kind of get a chance to mount a case for their survival? I mean, is there maybe someone that comes into their yeah, corner yeah, and yeah. defends I'd have, them? I'd have like a David Attenborough type character who says, right. "Well, they do this," and I go, "Yeah, but do we need that doing?" Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And so, what what does an animal need to do in order for you to feel that it sort of gets a chance of life? I mean, like a pet, like an animal, like a dog, maybe or a cat. I mean, they give a certain affection to its owner. Is that a valid uh, reason to survive? Not particularly uh, for you. Not really. No, okay. I've been saying that though. Blind people use dogs, so they are useful. So dogs are useful. Farmers Same birds, use dogs. Can save people, don't they? In yeah. snowy weather. Cats. <sighs> I'd have to think about it. Okay. Keep the mice down. Yeah, but yeah. you got rent to kill. Okay. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is something that will affect the world. Right. I think you'll find everything does. I think you'll find everything does. Mm. Except Carl. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure what effect he's having on the world. I tell you what, though, Steve. Right? Did you watch the mammals? I did see the mammals. They had uh, they had bison on it. Right. The weirdest looking things you've ever seen. Yeah. They've really again. Got you're on dangerous ground here, Carl. They've really got a. <laughs> it's like decide what you want to look like. <laughs> okay. It's just a mismatch of stuff. It's got a really big airy head. Yeah. Um. And like you, sort of bald at the back. Right. <laughs> uh, sort of it's like like someone you went to school with. <laughs> <laughs> Was there two of them? Ah, oh, brilliant! <laughs> from the album Original Pirate Material, it's obviously The Streets and uh, an album track from that, It's Too Late. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. I know everyone's raving about it being, you know, one of the albums of the year, but it, it is, I think. It's great. That's brilliant. I love, love the backing as well. Mm. It's just so good. The, the, the lyrics, the things you go, I don't, oh, they're my favourite band of the year. Um, next week then. We'll do all our favourite songs of the year, shall we? No, I think it's got to be two weeks' time, hasn't Oh, it? two weeks, is it? Yeah, we'll I'm do the away Christmas next week as well. What do you mean you're away next week? What are you doing? Zoe Ball Show? I'm going going up north again. Why? So Claire's going to be here with you. Okay. Yeah, right. at least she. What are you doing up north? She does her job. Just uh, Suzanne's dad's birthday. Uh, so. I bet he's a party animal. I bet I've read that they really kick off, don't they? Is it? Yeah. Uh, when? So are you going to be raving? Can't concentrate now. Oh, and he's all stressed because the lady from MTV is here. She's going to film his little face. So the things, the things he said in the week. He was so worried. He's got worried about the spot on his head. That won't come out. Just that, so you got your best side. On that side. That's all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Now the camera's out. Look, he's getting nervous now. Okay, Carl. Ignore the camera. Okay. Just ignore the camera. Okay. Now, me and Steve have done our research for you, and we've got two amazing things to tell you. Uh, what should I tell him first? About the baby or the? Well, they're crab. both equally fascinating, so you you choose. Um, I'll tell you the crab thing first, right? Um, we uh, Steve actually saw this thing in the Guardian the week uh, about our research thing, and then we looked it up. We looked into it on Friday, and it is incredible. Right, listen to this. There's a, a thing in um, um, in a bay in um, uh, New England, right, where it's it's like the biggest. Um, uh, they make silicon chips and stuff for computers, right? And because of the data protection thing, after they've d done them, because uh, they have to destroy the plates, right, where the information's sort of put onto them, but there's still flakes of silicon. They sort of grind it down straight away, and some of the flakes got into the bay, okay, but some of the information's still on the, even the slight like granules of silicon. Anyway, gets in the water, and silicon is rather like, um, a, a carbon derivative. I reckon if there had been life on another planet and it wasn't carbon based, it would be silicon based. Because right. that's simple sugars and proteins, it's just COH and that, and it can work with silicon, right? Anyway, the crabs have been taken up, it's put on the water, and they, they looked out on the beach, and uh, over years the crabs have started um, sort of putting themselves in formations, like geometric format, and they couldn't work out why they were doing this. And uh, when they put them in the experiment, they sort of like chopped them up and they found they'd taken on silicon. And it had sort of got into their brain and they were downloading information. They actually, they picked up little things because it's just chemical, um, you know, like uh, electrical impulses had got information off the silicon chip and they were interfacing it. But, this is the amazing thing, one bloke sort of thought of this and he thought, well if, if it's a simple computer with the brain, if it's just a simple sort of electrical thing, then maybe there's, there's sort of, uh, you know, we could, we could 
get it down. So what, what they did is they made a thing called a bio-interface. And they d put it into the crab's brain, just a really simple brain, so it's measured on the right? And it got impulses from it, and they were getting, like, computer read -ups. just flashes of, like, symbols and geometric things, right, on this screen to read the crab's brain. And it was stuff like, you know, fragments of a... Um, what, what made them do this in the first place? Because they saw the, they saw the crabs behaving differently. They were behaving differently to each other. They were just like, they were, you know, intelligent. And they were sort of solving problems and all this sort of stuff. Anyway, when they downloaded the, the thing, it was like a, there was, um, uh, they found us, they were so fast, they found one of the secretary's names where it had been on the silicon chip, where it was just a, like a flash of a computer screen. <coughs> but the most amazing thing is, they downloaded a memory, right, it was like a, like a snapshot where it had been burnt onto the retina of the crab, just a snapshot of something, and it was like a picture of the beach, like a couple of years ago, right? And they also, did, uh, uh, incredible, it was like a, just a, a digital black and white sort of thing, so they could see what the crab had seen. Amazing. Jeez. Amazing. So Intelligent what, what, crabs. What, what are they doing well, with them now, super brain. Well, they think, this is the, this is the upshot, they think they could use it as spy crabs, cause they could put these, get these crabs. Also, the other thing is, as generations went on, right, so they'd put a crab in the, the sea or something, right, uh, lots of crabs in, and then as generations went on, a, a newborn crab, they downloaded the memory, and it had the memories of it's great, 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 all together. It had every memory that any crab had been related to it beforehand. Cause it passed it on, it just passed it on. So not even ones that had been eating the, the silicon stuff? Yeah. No, th these, they- These are just like ones that have had kids. Yeah. yeah. And they've got like- And they know every, so you'd know everything your great, great, everything right the way back. So would that work if, if we ate silicon? Well, well possibly. So what are they gonna- well, they can use them for all sorts of things, though. I mean, that's that's what's incredible. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how you train it particularly. I don't know; it'd be quite tricky to train. But I'm assuming they could, if they can, if they can do it that way, then presumably they can it'd give be it like certain silicon information, which yeah. they can then plant in it, if you like, within it, within its sort of food. Also, if you could get them onto enemy beaches, it, yeah. you'd have like a thousand digital cameras just yeah. but but they, they, sneaking they, around. If you get like you know Osama bin Laden or someone, they just don't, calling they don't the understand sand. the information they've got. No, they don't. They're doing it. They just download messages. So that's the thing. So you could torture them, and they won't be able to sort of the information because they wouldn't know what they information they had because they're just but the like crab the crab the crab the first crab they downloaded they just kept seeing the same picture of a big crab feeding it which they <laughs> really yeah wow that's what like it's mother crab or yeah something. as just it was memories of it as a child but they're not in color presumably because no it's they, all in black and white yeah, black it's white. just a digital camera because it's just a, they don't see it in black and white so it's just like a it's just like a uh, i don't know i think it's, it's i think it's burnt onto the retina or something and um the only one that they kept were the ones they saw a lot of the time well, I mean, in a way, uh, some of the educating Ricky I've got for you today is, is on the similar lines. Right. Oh, uh, you've got well, to be impressed by that. You've got to no, be no, impressed no, by that. No, no, that's pretty good. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'm interested to see, you know, wh what they do what with they it. Do, what they do with the, what the crab developments are. But yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, pr that's pretty good. Yeah. But, I mean, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, that just digest it. that information, because that's not even the most impressive one we found. I think it is. I suppose it's pretty impressive, but the next one's more, maybe more shocking. Okay. Right. But let's start tuning, and Ricky's got another extraordinary Okay. The Cure love song classic on XFM. So that's the that's the crabs that can you can download their memories. But, um, but what about other animals that are in the sea in that same sea eating the stuff? Have they tested them yet? I don't know. I think it, they just took it on because their um, biology uh, has something to do with. I presume they could take up minerals and you know I don't know why. I don't know. But anyway, um, next one. Uh, it's just on the horizons. Um, uh, a bodybuilder, yeah. Um, uh, this married, is freaky. Had another bodybuilder, married another bodybuilder, yeah. right? And they're pregnant. And um, they had these tests, and the baby was very large, but it was causing it pain, right? In the thing, right? And it after a, this, it is, is this, extreme. Is, this it's is it's almost bizarre, in, like yeah. After the w the the female woke up pregnant after seven months, and the baby was walking had, around. No, it forced its way out of the vagina. Oh, no way. Yeah, it forced its way out. It, and it, it was- Cause it, it had, like, almost had like super strength, like- And it was pulling her along by the umbilical cord, and that, uh, and it was, it was, it was a stone. <laughs> Extraordinary. That, no, that's uh, freaky. I mean, because you talk about yeah. freaky stuff. That's made up. <laughs> what? It wasn't pulling her along. It yeah, was? Yeah, well, no, it was pretty- she could yeah, feel it. Exactly. 
And it was, do you know what I mean? Like, just went <laughs> and just sort of squeezed it. Just way got out because it was ready. Because all the hormones. Because it thought stuff. it was ready. Oh, God. Imagine that. Just waking up and finding that in the bottom of the bed. Freak out, wouldn't it? Because you think it was a nightmare initially. And it had hair and everything, didn't it? Yeah, because all the hormones there. Like See, a hair almost had a beard. There was something in the week about, um, you know, you've got test tube babies and that now, haven't you? Mm. But they've, they've managed to do it. I only caught up after I knew he'd be more impressed by the crabs than that. He doesn't care if it's No, no, human. no, I am. I'm well, telling you. I'm telling you, though, that, um, there was something- I only caught up after story because it was busy, but, uh, there's something about babies being able to be born without having any people involved. Or something. It's like putting them in the oven or something, and it's like a cake. <laughs> and after a certain amount of time, it's ready. <laughs> I think I you can buy those in Argos for kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, Christmas. Well, it's my first baby kit. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Play Doh, I think, that they can buy. Yeah. Well, so, what do you think of that then? The baby one. Yeah. I, I prefer the crab one. Yeah. But the baby, I mean, the baby thing's pretty, pretty horrible. Yeah. yeah. So, it was bigger than the. Than like the average. But, um, yeah. Um, both made up. We made those up. Yeah, both, both rubbish. They're both I mean, bullshit. they are both rubbish. Despite the fact they're both rubbish. Yeah. They're interesting. We made those up. Both those stupid stories up. <laughs> yeah. Imagine <laughs> downloading a crab's memories and seeing its mum feeding it as a child. <laughs> <laughs> Both hats uh, are rubbish. I had trouble, I had trouble. Yeah. I knew I was gonna have trouble with, um, pushed its way out of the vagina. <laughs> yeah. I practiced that about thirty times yesterday with Steve. I was going, I'm not gonna be able to do it, mate. Yeah. I'm not gonna be able to say that. Yeah. <laughs> are you disappointed? A little bit. I, I mean, the baby one's a bit <laughs> sort of out there. Yeah. I wasn't really having, having that one. No. But the, but the crab one, mm. I, I, See, now, what's interesting, I think, is a, is a useful experiment, Carl. <laughs> I don't know what it's taught you about yourself, <laughs> but would you say that that's revealed to you a certain thing? I don't know, maybe... That you're a bit gullible. I mean, you know, what I'm saying is maybe you shouldn't accept or swallow ho your hook, line and sinker everything you read on the web. <laughs> you don't think maybe a valuable lesson I there? feel bad, because I, I feel... I said to Steve, he won't be annoyed that we conned him, he'd be annoyed that they're actually not true. You'd love that crab thing to be true, wouldn't you? It wouldn't surprise me if it did happen one day. Sure. Yeah. So, and then yeah. he'd slough And it's uh, in the rake when I said about the crabs, you went, well, I'm keeping them then. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah. Right, well, I, I know what you're getting at. <laughs> with the, uh, with the educating Ricky, but, it, you know. Let's see, let's see. You've got, uh, three titles. Yeah. Uh, that I tease you with, different stories, you take your pick and I teach you something, that yeah. did happen. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of venom. Uh, yeah, go on. First one is, um, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet that's bacon related, knowing you. <laughs> you've got, uh, you've got enough is anus. Say that again. Enough is an anus. <laughs> <laughs> enough is enough. Well. But it's changed to enough is an anus. Yeah. And okay. right, you've got, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've also got, uh, will it, will it be a bloke? Oh, oh no. Will it like a bloke or a woman? <laughs> What? Will it like a bloke or a woman? Will it? Yeah. <laughs> Will it like a bloke or a woman? Wow. Yeah, so there you, there are your three stories okay. today. Okay, sounds exciting. Okay, well I'll have so will it, will well, it like- we're gonna play a record now, Rick, surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. And, uh, and come back with- Sorry uh, about the crowd and the big baby. It's right. It's a valuable lesson, really. I'll think of a title for him. <laughs> yeah, Oasis. Um, the Hindu Times. Carl just did his little screen test down the lens <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> He went, just, said, just look at the camera. He went, right, do you want to know about MTV? So it, well, it might be VH1. He went, right, it did Rockbusters and after the break, some Genesis. Oh, <laughs> oh I'd watch it. Oh. You, didn't, you didn't tell me she wanted all this. I thought you said, because I said, you just bring your own camera in mm. and we'll put it down on some tape and pass that on to her. Yeah. yeah. So now, this, I'm doing two jobs at once again. This is what I'm saying to you in the week. <laughs> I'm juggling jobs all the time. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'll tell um, you. Right, come on then. How much do I get? <laughs> <laughs> he looked straight at the camera and said that. Right. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> three stories. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Looking Enough is a nuss. And, uh. And uh, we'll have that one then. That one? Yeah. Right, well, um. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you believe in palm reading and stuff? No. Yes. Sorry, yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Sorry, I forgot. Yes, of course we do. Mm -hmm. Right, well, there's a fella <coughs> who, um, he, he used to do palm reading. Oh, yeah. But a lot of people, he found that when he went up to him in the street and said, do you want your palm reading? He was like, a lot of them were like, you know, oh, I've, I've, 
you know, I'm a bit ashamed of my nails and stuff because mm. they're a labourer or, or they're a cleaner or mm. something like that. I know a lot of labourers are slightly embarrassed by their nails. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. So if look that. at my bloody hands, Reg. <laughs> well, that's that hod carrying. <laughs> did I ever tell you? That? <laughs> did I ever tell you that I got picked at school to <laughs> make tea and serve biscuits to old people because I've got good nails? <laughs> Uh, no, no, go on. Go is on. there any more yeah. to the story? Oh, that's about it. I mean, it'd be, <laughs> we used to do like, I think the head teacher must have been getting something, maybe getting his mam in there for free or something in some people's home. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so <laughs> he offered the kids <sighs> at the school, uh, he said, right, all, all sit at your desk and put your hands <laughs> on the table. And everyone did. And he walked past <laughs> mine and he said, not bad, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> And he said, uh, you've got the afternoon off, you can uh, go and serve biscuits and tea to the old, old people. What did you say? I said, all right then. <coughs> was good. that? Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon. <laughs> but anyway, was so these- Yeah, these, was, well, what did you do? He just sort of walked around and went, you all right, uh, do you want bourbons or die ya? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you'd get on with old people, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd right? love to see- maybe Especially the senile ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! No, but I'd love to see you on VH1, just do a link, and just go, you know, they, they've just played, uh, um, Robert Palmer, right? And it comes to you in a little park, and you just sit next to an old lady and go, all right? And you go, yeah, not too bad. You go, what do you think of London? Crap, innit? And she goes, yeah, it's awful, innit? And you just have a talk, and you go, all right, well, she doesn't like it. In excess. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see. Mm. I still think my idea is better. But, mm -hmm. so what are you going for then? Oh, you've picked one, haven't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, so this fella. So there's, so there's, there's palmists going around the streets. Yeah, he's going round and randomly trying to they're give they're palm losing, readings. They're losing money. Right. Hand over fist. Yeah. All right. So, um, <laughs> they said, uh, <laughs> he, he's, what he's done, he's, he's reading people's, uh, bottoms now. <laughs> Sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. He just, he just, I didn't quite follow that. He was a palm reader. That wasn't making money. So now he's going up to people in the street and saying, can I see your arse? Basically, yeah. So yeah. from, from, from being a palmist to an arsonist? Well, uh -huh. they, they just, that's, that's what he does. He said these same sort of lines and that that you get on your hand, you get them on your, on your bottom <laughs> and, uh, he can read them. Right. Yeah, he's not a pervert really, or making up as he goes along. No, that's, that's it. That was that. So, if, sorry, if a man <laughs> came up to you in the street and said, can I have a look at your arse? <laughs> can I read your arse? You'd, you'd drop your trousers, would you? <laughs> no, no, no. If you went up to him and they said, oh, I'd rather you didn't because I'm a labourer. I've got bad fingernails. No, anyway. that's why I've seen, that's what the, a lot of labourers, they're showing their cleavage, you think, but actually they're having their arse right? <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. really a lot of, that's what it is. And then, right, So, is know, that the end of the story? <laughs> yeah. But then because- That's it. Educating Ricky is there's a bloke <laughs> who reads arses. <laughs> no, but You're then, a mentalist. But no, but What then, are you talking about? But then, do you know like, now and again I come up with a little jokey line. I thought yeah. I'd make an effort today for VH1 or MTV. Yeah. yeah. Little line there. Um, <laughs> don't worry, it won't last. It might just be a splash in the pan. Okay. Phil Collins next. <laughs> yes, play, let's play some Phil. <laughs> let's play some Phil. Oh, oh, this is the best show. I mean, off air, obviously. I'm sure people at home aren't enjoying it as much as we are, but Carl uh, is continuing his, uh, what do they call this? A his screen test. Mm. Yeah, that was, uh, let down by Radiohead. Carl, what it's are you thinking? What are you thinking? I what just think, think it's, it's not right, really, is it? I'm trying to do a job. Yeah. Whilst trying to get another job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean? but well, a lot of your presenters are on MTV now. Yeah, but- they, 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 All of them have got Zane in their name, but- you know. Yeah, it's not, it's not really right, is it? Go on. But, right, so, uh You we better get that idea. Carl Zane Pilkington. Educating Ricky, will we carry on? Yeah. Right, you've got left. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh yeah. will it like fellas or will it like women? Well, you said wool before. Yeah, wool it. Go on then, I've wool it. Right, now this is similar to the one you were talking about before, right? They found out <laughs> that, um... <laughs> they. <laughs> yeah. Scientists, scientists. Oh, have, yeah. Have found out... 17th century? That, um, like now, uh, one in ten rams are gay. One in ten rams <laughs> are gay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was like, wool it. That's how I could get that in. Um, <laughs> they got a load of gay and straight rams. Right. Right. Um, they worked out which were which first. They said, right, that's, that bunch there is a, is a gay bunch. They looked better, they just had more pride in their appearance. And, uh, and the other ones 
you know, the straight ones, and then they gave them to this scientist and said, right, go on, do what you gotta do. <laughs> and they took the brains out of, of all of them. <laughs> Just to check. And, um, they did tests on the brain and it worked out that they've got something smaller in the brain. The gay ones have got something in the brain that makes it smaller. And they said, right, well, that's probably how it's gonna work on, on males. On, on like males and females and like humans. So you took from this that gays have smaller brains than straight people? No, there's something in the brain. Right, so if, go on. So if someone's saying, you know, oh, I'm a gay, or they don't, they're not sure or whatever, they will now be able to find out. <laughs> so you can go to the doctor and <laughs> to find out if you're straight or gay? C c is there any gay in my brain? Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. You've got a little bit of a gay in you, yes. A little bit of a gay in there. Yes, you've got the, uh, you've well, got, what, you've what got a little bent cell there. Well, that's, that's why they did it, anyway. I don't understand how they, how they could differentiate which was straight and which were gay to begin with before they then gave it to the scientist. Wasn't that what the <laughs> scientists figured out? <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's, how there's, could they tell? Were there's they one theory that it is genetically film? determined. There is one, <laughs> there is, there is, there is a theory that's genetically determined, but I, I, I don't think it's as easy as, um, uh, pulling a sheep's brain apart and finding a little pink sort of like blob in there going, right, we've taken the guy out, now he's gonna go and shag some ewes. I don't think it's that straightforward. Although, the, uh, uh, the homosexuality does occur at uh, a similar sort of rate in animals, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So... You knew that, didn't you? So that's, that's that one. I mean... <laughs> I just like the idea of the farmer figuring out which is straight and gay. Well, yeah. that one's wearing quite a camp-looking neckerchief. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I'm yeah. thinking maybe yeah. he's gay. Is that- yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the fact they can- uh, okay, uh, <laughs> that, that was- <laughs> that was <laughs> a big fan of Sophie Ellis Baxter. <laughs> yeah, so... yeah, yeah. They would da- they put on ABBA and see which ones dance. <laughs> exactly, That's yeah. how they- Which one- yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, put on, like, Barbara Streisand <laughs> and see which ones sing along. <laughs> that shit is rubbish. What did I find out- <laughs> Did, did, you, say, did you just say that is rubbish? No, I found out other- other stuff in the week that did didn't make the top three. Wow. Wow. Uh, we haven't even had the- This no. must be mediocre stuff then. This <laughs> must be really bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, or it, it might be dubious. Go on. There's um, there's a woman in Ireland- Yeah. Mm, who has been with a fella for eleven years. Yeah. Um, she always saying to him, you know, when, when, when are we gonna get married and that? And he's like, oh, we don't need to. Uh, you know, we're happy and that. Do you know, like I am with Suzanne, it's like, there's no point, really. Yeah. Unless married. you have a kid, I don't think you need to, do you? Right. So, um, he was like, we'll do it in time, in time, and all that. Anyway, he comes home from work one day, he says, oh, go on then, we'll get married. She was so shocked, her hair fell out. <laughs> 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 oh. Did you get that? Wow. So. That's extraordinary. <laughs> and what did he say? Oh, I'm not marrying you, Baldy. Yeah, yeah. Well, she that, was so, she was so shocked, shocked her hair fell out. Yeah. I love the idea of it just going yeah, to it the just ground. Fell out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, what else? That right, that's rubbish. That that's rubbish. That, that's that rubbish. That that's rubbish. That's rubbish. Next. You've also got, um... What's it's weird, isn't it, Rick, that the stories <laughs> that we made up are <laughs> more plausible <laughs> yeah. than the facts yeah. he's actually giving I think us. we tried too hard. Mm. Mm. I think we tried yeah, to That's what he's willing to believe. He's willing to believe <laughs> that a woman's hair fell out when her husband came out and said, let's get married then. Oh, yeah. you old romantic. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are, then. Here's a good one. Go on, then. Right, in Dubai, this woman went to Dubai for her holiday. Mm. And, um, <laughs> she was over there, and apparently in the markets- Bit of buy spider? They, they sell lizards. Oh, go on. Right, just like for people to buy. Mm. So mm. she buys one, mm. not knowing that you're not really meant to take him out of the country. Sure. Um, puts it in a bag. Yeah. Uh, As you do. What have you. And, um, then she gets to the airport when she's going home, she's thinking, I can't really leave it in my bag. Yeah. So she puts it on her head. On wears, her head? Wears it as a hat. <laughs> she wore the lizard as a hat? Yeah. Um, <coughs> people on the plane were just like, yeah, everything's fine, you know, they're doing the cross checks and that. Yeah. Have you got your seatbelt on? Yeah. There's a woman great. there with a lizard hat. Um, <laughs> everything's going well. She gets uh, off the plane at Manchester airport, um, lizard sticks its tongue out. Yeah. The air hostess says, what are you doing with that? She goes, I've had it. I've had it. Lizard said, I just found her in Dubai. <laughs> the, uh, they said, I've had this with me all, all journey, and they said, well, you shouldn't have done, and they took it off her. Yeah, I think that is true, actually. Yeah? Yeah. So what about that? Yeah, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That educated me. Right, what, any more? Well, what's that taught you? That's taught you, you know, be careful when smuggling lizards <laughs> yeah. back as some kind of hat. Yeah, don't, just say lizard, keep your tongue in, you <laughs> twat. <laughs> Not <laughs> at the customs officer! <laughs> yeah. And, uh, what else have Any Anyone didn't quite make it? <laughs> Anything we, to declare. We, we, oh! <laughs> I've, got, I've got a lizard on my head. <laughs> We've got an old saying, one if you want that. 
Go on then. Are yeah. these ones- sorry, are these ones that d didn't make the list? These are ones that didn't make it. Oh, yeah. right, Because okay. I always- I always get more in than- than I need to, just in case. Just think if someone's just tuned in now. Mm. Is Anders listening? Is, uh, well, I'll tell you, Dickie Anderson. Anderson. I've, got a, I've got an email from Richard Anderson, uh, Dickie Anderson. Go on. Uh, the dick machine, which- <laughs> <laughs> The big dick. <laughs> the big dick, which- yeah. uh, <laughs> Now, this is interesting. It's- I mean, I think we're wearing him down. Ricky, I think your show might be improving. Go on. That sense of despair and loneliness I normally feel when listening to your show doesn't seem so bad today. He's desensitized to it. Yeah, exactly. Or he's given up. Or mm. he's just given up. Yeah. 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 I mean, you listen to this long enough and your standards will drop. Let's play tune. Let's come back with some more Carl's, uh, yeah, I don't, you... I don't want to use the word facts. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, he's, no, no. Uh, he's got more screen testing now. The camera's ready for you. Yeah. Feeder. Yes. Just around feeder. That's my favourite feeder track ever. Oh, it's, it's bugging me. It's just like, um, a ride track from about ten or fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. So if, if you know, put me up my misery, f email in. It's just like a ride track from about 1990. And I can't, it's just the beginning. Uh -huh. Drive me mental. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yeah, well, uh, half hour to go. You've done your screen test. Yeah. Reluctantly, <laughs> I think you. I think you had just such the wrong attitude. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? If, I've told you before, if things are meant to be, right, they'll happen. That's yeah. how I've got through my life, right? I'm 29 now. Yeah. Never thirty, ain't you? Well, yeah, thirty, but the camera's still on. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. <laughs> <laughs> and everything I've done in my life, I've never sort of planned it. Do you know Is what that I mean? how you storm through your uh, your exams? Well, look, look, your at, look at the <laughs> look at the school play doing Little Donkey. I yeah. wasn't planning that day sure. to do the drums. It just on the night I couldn't help myself. And you stole the show. What when, happened? What do you mean? When when you know when all the kids were playing Little Donkey, I wasn't meant to be doing my drum set in that track. I was only meant to. I think I was doing We Three Kings or something. Uh -huh. But when they started doing it, the tune I couldn't help myself with the drumstick, just like tapping away. Right at the at the drum. Yeah. And then when it came on, I was like, oh, and I started doing it and like the teacher looked at, uh, looked over at me and I was like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. But she sort of gave me the nod as if to say, it's alright, carry on, it's, it's sounding good. <laughs> then after it she went, you know, they love that, you can do that again tomorrow night. Yeah. So I got like an extra, extra part in the play and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That wasn't So planned. you were, so, so you were doing the drum part to We Three Kings over Little Donkey? Yeah. That's weird, that is like Fatboy Slim or something, isn't it, when they mix up. No. Or Mobius. Still mashing it up at the age of what, eight? Yeah. No. And that's what I'm saying. And that, is that planned. when, um, is that when, uh, someone was filming it and you could f hear your dad on the camcorder going, he looks like a twat? That's, that's the one, yeah. yeah. Oh. And that's why, maybe that's why I don't want to be on the telly, cos I'll always have me dad's sort of echoing voice just saying, <laughs> he shouldn't be on there, he looks, <laughs> looks like a, that's it. So, so that's, that's why I'm a bit sort of nervous about this today. Really? You think it's sort of quite, Freudian in a way, sort of. Yeah. You're actually just case for us, right? Well, plus I haven't got the look. I don't, I'm not pretending, right, that mm. I should be on the telly. What's wrong don't... with your look for VH1? It's not right. It's not John right. Jono was on VH1. Was he? Yes. So I'm going up against Jono. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. He's gone now, he's moved on. Yeah, there you go, you see. Another one who they gave a chance to. Yeah. And then he was like, you know, yeah, I can do that. It's, it's built up, right? They built him up, you can do that as a job. <laughs> and then they knocked him down. And he probably started eating. Well, I don't think you can <laughs> knock John over. He started eating. He started eating. I'm look at him now. Yeah. Right, oh. So that's what I'm saying. So if it's meant to be, right? It, whoever's going to watch this tape, you know, yeah. uh, thanks for the offer and that. But you know, time will tell. <laughs> Very wise. So, yeah. There you go. And I tell you what, actually, go right, on. It's it's a bit funny because we're looking on the web in the week at different sayings, and. Uh, <laughs> Do you know the saying? A round head does not an MTV presenter no, make. Yeah, no. Spa uh, what's that saying? Spark, <laughs> spark, oh. spark in the pan or something? Hey, flash in the pan. Flash in the pan. Yeah. Do you know that saying? <coughs> yeah. That, that's a bit like what could happen to me, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? There I am trying to do my normal job, right? <laughs> and then you bring me in here on a Saturday. Next thing, everyone's after me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then it doesn't work out, and yeah. I'm dropped. Yeah. And that saying, flash in a pan. Do you know how it came about? No. Um, do you know like how years ago they used to dig for gold? Gold. Yeah. Yeah. And they had like a little pan. Yeah. And they'd put the soil in and they'd rub the soil. Yeah, and it shone in the now sun. Now and again it shone in the sun and they yeah. got all excited and were like, oh brilliant, some gold. And then they realised it was just the sun flashing in the pan. Yeah. And that's, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. So again, that's a bit weird how I saw that saying in the week. Almost yeah. like a little thing saying, don't be getting carried away. Omen. 
So, well, it makes you wonder. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> so, so, tell you, things that make you wonder, you saw Darren Brown, what did he do? Darren oh Brown, no, he's no, extraordinary. Yeah, you know, I told him about it. So, uh, um, you should uh, peep. To, for a lot of people don't realise who Darren Brown is, and he's, oh, well, I we think, w- the best illusionist um, in the country. We went to, uh, Jonathan Ross's house, um, for his birthday. I didn't. Uh, no, me, uh, uh, me and Jane. And we went there, right, and there was lots of people there. And, uh, um, Darren Brown was there. Yeah. And Jonathan got Darren Brown to do so. And it was incredible. He did all these tricks, right? Um, <coughs> I mean, incredible. It was just amazing. Um, and he did one, um, uh, with a bloke that was there, a uh, friend of Jonathan's, I think his name was, um, Ray. And, uh, he got him to give the pack, he said count the cards, and he counted out fifty-two Just cards. Two. Yeah. yeah? Went, yeah, he went, think of any card in that pack. He didn't touch it yet, he's counted fifty-two, it, it was in his hand, he said think of any card. He said, what was it? He said, three of spades or something. He went, find it in the pack, couldn't find it, he said count the cards, there was fifty-one. Right, and he couldn't find the card, and he hadn't heard it, and we forgot about it, he went, oh, it's gone wrong, and he forgot about it, he, and he kept, so he was going, I wonder where that card is, and he kept looking at it, I found out that about a week ago, Ray went into hospital with an appendicitis, yeah, and the surgeon was really so they said was somewhat crumpled up, there was a th- thing, and it was a card, it was the card that was in his thing causing appendicitis, and when he came out of surgery, there was a card from Darren Brown saying, was that your card? That's amazing, don't you think? I mean, this that's like a, incredible. This thing and what, and then a crab went, <laughs> I know what it is, it's a five of spades. <laughs> It's all the wind up. Yeah. Yeah, well, see. <laughs> see, I'm not gonna believe anything anymore. But that's so if good. I was, if I ever You've learned a lesson. <laughs> yeah, but say, say if all this goes wrong now, right? Cry wolf and all that. Yeah. Imagine I get dropped by MTV. <laughs> MTV <laughs> you haven't been woman. asked yet. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> uh, right, they're short on firemen because they're always going on strike. <laughs> I answer the phone, it's you saying my house is on fire. I don't know what you're talking about now, Sorry, Carl. You, I actually, <laughs> I don't know what he's talking no, about. Hang on, I think somewhere along the line there, Carl has been recruited by the fire brigade. <laughs> Did you leave that bit out in the story? Start again. Yeah, right, that's what right, I'm saying. because I just wound you up about crabs, babies pushing their way out of vaginas, yeah. and Darren Brown calling the pencil. Right, yeah. Little, uh, what's, what's the saying about, uh, Little acorns little, don't little, gather little any grounds. Cry, uh, crying wolf. You yeah. can take a fish to water and you can't you make a well, Do you know, you know that saying, um, you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink? Do you know why? Um, cause it's neck's too long. Ne- what? It's got an awkward neck. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's correct. That is correct. Right, anyway, well, we've still got to come. Uh, right, it's Carl. been bad today, I'm gonna apologise to people listening today cause Your mind's I, not I haven't focused, been focused. Do you, do you know, do you, have you heard the thing that ga- Rolling Stone gathers no moss? Yeah. You aware of that? Yeah. Do you know what that's from? Uh, do you know where it, it's from? In Woodstock. Right, the band used to go out and get this sort of like moss that used to grow there and it was sort of like slightly hallucinogenic, right? And they used to come back and they used to all go out, like, everyone was out there, mamas and papas were doing it, um, the doors, they all came back. But Mick Jagger and Keith Richards would never do it. But they'd smoke other people's. Yeah. A Rolling Stone never gathers his own moss. <laughs> that was what it was. <laughs> Seriously, Carl! Right, that's so the we've truth. still got to come. Uh, <laughs> rock busters. Have you heard the saying, a fish in time saves nine? The, s- the clues were- Have you heard that? That'll never get off the ground. <laughs> LZ. You've got- Have you heard that saying, out of the frying pan into the saucepan? <laughs> You've also really? got- uh, Carl. Oh. We're oh. trying to hold it together now. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. No, we're trying to teach you something, Carl. Yeah, but you're not. Why? Because at least my stuff that I tell you, if you go into a pub and told someone- What? what? There was a blind girl, she hit her head, she could see. What's that? Well, just don't, don't get down if your eyes are bad. Right, <laughs> <laughs> like we've- No, I've, go round headbutting right, things. Play play song. Play oh, it. Carl, come on. <laughs> <laughs> The Undertones, Teenage Kicks, that's one of the tracks on the, uh, best air guitar album in the world ever, volume two, which is one of the prizes on today's Rockbusters. And John Peel's favourite track John ever. John Peel's favourite song of all time. And, uh, so, Carl, have you got the answers for Rockbusters this week? Yeah, we have, yeah. We've got, uh, <laughs> the first clue. <laughs> You're upset, <laughs> so Carl. miserable. I- I'm a bit fed up today. The weather's- I knew when I was walking in today, though, that I'd be- But that video, there's lots of- there's lots of weather on that video, so they can- whoever wins this can go and see sort of the weather you were talking about. <laughs> uh, the first one was, that'll never get off the ground. Uh, LZ. Yeah. The answer there was Led Zeppelin. So easy. Um, yeah, but I said that's here. There's always two easy ones and a difficult one. Go on. The third one was, you'll get a load of bacon off them. Go on. That was L. Uh, Long Pigs. Right. Yeah, and then the second one was uh, that woman's got her husband's gloves and a pair of her own. Yeah, H H. Yeah, yeah, that was Ermin's Ermits. 
<laughs> so that's that's the three that's the three answers. I'm sure well, I'd like to give the prize this week. There's Herman's Hermits. What? There's a lot of Herman's Hermits. That is genius, Carl. That is genius. Oh, Herman's Hermits. So, There's so many people who are worthy of the um of the prizes, obviously. I'd quite like to give the prize this week to um Tom McGibbon. <laughs> Just because I like his name, I, I don't know if I've pronounced that right, but Tom McGibbon. Yeah. I like to give that to no, him. No, you shouldn't laugh at Tom's name. Because uh, he also lives in Blockshall Road. I don't know why I find that. <laughs> Tom McGibbon of Blockshall Road. I don't know why. Well, you've made a mockery. You've made uh, a monkey out of the man. Uh, for, uh, for old Gibbo. Yeah. That's yeah. It. And he's asking that. He's got a question there. What? Um, can Carl get rid of slugs? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm almost certain he can. Just so well, well done to um if to, it, if, uh, if he's Gibbon. been listening, if he was listening a few months ago, he would have known how to. Go on. Because I told you what slugs like. What? Getting in letterboxes. Mm. <laughs> How does that get rid of them? Put some stamps in your garden. <laughs> what? <laughs> they like, what uh, the? no, what they the? like, they like stamp glue. <laughs> so, yeah. I that's and how, did that, how, how does that get rid of them? They keep coming back, won't they? Then they okay. go, I can't believe it. We'd have to climb those boxes now. There's a fellow leaving well, stamps out for us. Go. You've won some prizes and I've sorted you. No, <laughs> how does that get rid of slugs? Leaving stamps out for them, their favourite food. Because they- It's like planting a load of lettuces, they love that. <laughs> well, it depends where he's got them. I thought he meant he's got them in his house. Okay. So, oh, to I put stamps know. on the outside, they go, there's loads of stamps out here, lads. Let's leave this house. Right, so- Let's get out of this house. We've got, uh, we've got one more- Go on. Uh, educating Ricky to- Go on in quick then. I need, I need educating. Right. Uh, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. How was he gonna outwit Darren Brown? You said something in the break. Oh, I have to say, yeah, um, Darren Brown, who, uh, we bumped into as well, and he did this incredible trick where he puts 40 pounds down on the table, and he says, I can tell you which hand you've got a pound coin in, uh, let's say five times out of five, you know, so I have a, a pound coin in one hand, I put it behind my back, I bring my hands out, and he can tell me every single time which hand it's in by asking questions, by doing various things. Well, he doesn't things, ask, but he just goes, no, you might have done that one, you might do the same again, but then you're an intelligent person, you're probably not where he goes, so it's in that one, and he does it every time, yeah, five, it's it every incredible. Time. It's absolutely majestic. Oh, I, I mentioned this to Carl. Yeah. And, well, Carl, you tell me how you think you could outwit Darren Brown. Cause well, your dad used to do this trick, you well, told me. My dad used to play this. Yeah. Um. How old were you? Uh, I dunno, probably about ten. So you probably weren't as sharp as you were now, then. Uh, so <laughs> he used to play it, and, and the way of telling what Andy's got it in, his hand looks bigger. So that's all you've got to do. <laughs> that's how he did it then! Yeah. That's so to Darren catch Darren Brown. out, so ca- no, to catch Darren out- It was a Darren bit different out, cause he did it with golf balls, but- <laughs> But to catch Darren out, <laughs> Carl told me, Rick- <laughs> He did it with a spud! To catch Darren out, yeah. the hand which hasn't got the coin in, just make it slightly bigger. <laughs> just make it, just like, extend it slightly, so it's slightly larger, and that'll catch Darren out. You'll never be able to <laughs> well, that's that. how he did it. Or, you... just put, put a pound in each hand- Okay. And wind him up. Just go, no, you're wrong. You're yeah. a, you are brilliant, Carl. Yeah. Do this one. Do you, do, do you, uh, did your dad used to do the one where he takes your nose off, <laughs> off of your face and puts it between his fingers? Did, did you, you did you keep going to the doctor? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go on. Right. You know how that's done? You know he's not actually taking your nose off. It's his off. thumb. Go it on. It is his thumb. Go Last on. one. Yeah. Don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. It's been a mess today, <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> what do you mean, it's been a mess? It's been a mess. What has? This. What? The show? Yeah. How has it been any worse? It's just all over the place. There's no sort of, it's not tight, it's not tight like it generally is. Um, <laughs> and she'll be going away with this, thinking that's what the show would be like. She listens to MTV. the show, she knows it's a shambles every week. Go on. Yeah. Uh, don't rub it too hard, you'll get a rasher. Yeah. Do you know the saying, ham it up? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, go on, yeah. yeah. Right, well, do you know what it means? Well, it means to overact. Right. Well, Years ago, w with uh, with actors in musicals and stuff, mm. they'd um, the actors used to look pretty ill on, on the stage because they didn't have proper makeup and that. Right, right. So what they used to do uh, uh, to make themselves look rub their face in pigs. Well, they got they got bacon, mm. rubbed it on the face, mm. and it made the face a bit sticky because of all the like you know the pig fat and bit of lard and stuff like that. Mm. And then they'd go and get some bricks, bricks, yeah, mm -hmm. house bricks rub them together, make some sort of red dust from the brick, mm. and then put the dust on the face. Mm. And the, the fat and the lard and that would make the dust stick mm. to the face. Mm. And um, they'd look well under the lights. And that's that's where the they'd saying- They'd smell great as well. Yeah, well- They're Lovely, everyone likes to smell of bacon. Mm. No, but, so that's, that's the old, uh, ham it up, that's where like it that. comes from. I'm, you know, if, if it's true, I've, started, I've got no reason to think that it's not. So that's your third educating Ricky today. So what have you learned?
Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely got, sod all. You've got your hamming it up. Yeah. Um, rams are gay. They, they know which ones are gay now. <laughs> now! <laughs> and, uh, At last, thank the, fella, the fella who can hand read, um, an arse. <laughs> if you miss the rest of the show, <laughs> what are you gonna make of that? <laughs> Have you just tuned in? <laughs> you are a maniac, Carl. So, and you've had your screen test. I reckon we'll be seeing you on MTV or VH1 in the near future. How oh. much is it? How much? I mean, she can't answer. What do you reckon I'll get? Because I've, I've, you see, the annoying thing is, I've just bought a flat in London. Yeah. In central London. Yeah. MTV's in Camden. Yeah. I wouldn't have bought in central London if I'd have known <laughs> I'd had to go there. That was to make my life easier so I could walk to work. So now I've got to go out of my way. So I need <laughs> to cover that. <laughs> <laughs> to be truthful, I'm not sure that the MTV gig is a certainty. Yet. Uh, I she's, she's pretending she's not sure, but she can't wait to sign me up. Yeah. I reckon you'd, you know, you, uh, m maybe start off with a few little interstitials, just like, you know, what do you think, make of that, or Carl says, and, you know, a few of them. I reckon you'll make a, you know, a few but grand. It, why has it got to be music? There's why can't music. it be? I think that idea on the animals is good. I can do film stuff. I'm talking about films. <laughs> Elephant Man. Love that. Go on then, do a film review, quickly. Right, uh, right, well today on, uh, film review, we're doing, uh, classic films, um, and today we're looking at, uh, Elephant Man, John Merrick, one of his, one of his better pieces of work. Um, it's a sad film, I, I I've never really been able to watch it all the way through. <laughs> Sorry, uh, John Merrick's better piece of work was him being the Elephant Man, played by John Hurt. Yeah. Go on then. Um, sad film, uh, when I was younger. Tell us a bit about it. What is it about? It. It's who's about John a Merrick? fella. It's about yeah, a fella who's yeah, got a funny head. Right. Tell us this. And, um, you know, he lives in, uh, I think he lives in London, in like the, about the 1930s or something like that. And he's being picked on all the time and stuff. Mm. And, um, first time you watch it, you'll probably cry a bit. And then the second time you watch it, you're just sort of thinking, God, that would be bad. Sort of having a head like that being picked on all the time. And the third time you watch it, you might think, you know, oh, uh, how does he get his jumper on? <laughs> uh, then, I don't know, probably bored of it the fourth time. <laughs> but, but it's well worth watching, so, uh, Elephant Man, uh, Brilliant. Yeah, see it. Brilliant. I think if you want to get on TV, Carl, you'd be better as the subject <laughs> of maybe like an omnibus <laughs> documentary. <laughs> <Yeah>. Living with Carl. <laughs> Or maybe one of those, uh, appeals in Comic Relief. It doesn't oh, all go to oh. the people abroad, you know. There's some people in this country that need our help. <laughs> yeah. See you later. What is it? That's the Libertines, Time for Heroes. Oh, right, yeah. So, Carl, what, what a great day. Carl, he's done his, uh, screen test. That's going back to, uh, MTV now, to look at the big wigs to have a look at. Should mention wigs. <laughs> um, we've had, uh, Rockbusters. We've had, uh, Educating Ricky. We had Educating Carl. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Claire here next week, so. Yeah. But you'll be back for the big a... Christmas, uh, Christmas Spectacular. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's that. I've not been happy today. Go um, on, why? If someone's listened for the first time today, it's, it is normally better than this. It's not. No, it is. It is. I don't think it is. So, no. uh, so I, really, I really don't think it is. So that's that then. So I'll see you in. Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Alright, enjoy yourself. Cheers. Best of luck with MTV. Alright, I'll, uh, see you later. Okay. See ya.